Can you do that and get the uh, uh. What's that noise? I don't know, but it's on. <gasps> well, welcome to Cooking Over the Counter with David. I'm your host, Donald Trump. I'm Mike Pence. <laughs> you may call me father. You may call, and I will be mother today. So, welcome to the show today, and we're going to get the day started with a little bit of a cocktail situation. And look who we have actually in person in the flesh. Miss Angie. It's nice to see you all. Thank uh, you for having me. I'm so glad to see you. Actually in person. So by the way, since March 8th, this is the only person that I've seen in the flesh since that day. Other than, other than David. Yeah. And we are mutually quarantined about few, a few, what, three or four walks away from each other? Something like that. Something like that. Very so nice. we've both, both been, you know, super hygienic, seeing <laughs> no one. And then we saw each other. Yeah. And tears flowed like there vodka. Was, there was hugging. Huh, there was hugging. So much hugging. So much hugging. It was I so just, nice. Yeah. Hugs are the best. Well, we're going to get started with a little cocktail. So, Angie, I'm going to teach you. Um, it's a drink called the Katie. It's named after my friend Katie Campbell. She made it up. She made it up. So, what she does is takes frozen blueberries and then she just pours a lot of vodka in a glass with those and lets those soak. For how long? For probably like I don't know. A few minutes. A few minutes. Okay. Not not terribly long. You let them get a little like a little, a little soupy. A little soupy mm -hmm. is good. We'll just have those as like you know candy throughout the day. Oh, it's my favorite kind of candy. <laughs> But we're also going to start with a little champagne vodka mixture, and I'm going to put some blueberries in the bottom of our glasses. I like how tiny these blueberries are. Right? They're, They're a little so frozen. Cute. They are cute. Okay, this will be adding okay. a little tough color and flavor for us. Yay! All right, so how about you pop open that bottle, Ange? Sure will. I know that you are really adept at bo popping bottles. Yeah, I learned it from the rap songs. <laughs> you learned it from what? Rap songs. Right. <laughs> Isn't that where everybody learns it? That's where I learned it. For sure. So David, who do we have here watching with us? Oh, I love the sound of that. Is there a better sound? <laughs> Just hugs during quarantine. Just hugs during quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, who's we have, who do we have on with us, David? So our Jerry. Oh, I Jerry, are you so jealous? Look at us, Jerry. Do you love our sunglasses? Do you love our, my headscarf situation? We've been talking about you, Jerry. We miss you. We miss so you. So imagine yourself here. Imagine yourself right here. This is a space for Jerry. In fact, this third glass is actually for Jerry. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pour a little bit of vodka in the bottom of our glasses with those beautiful, beautiful frozen blueberries. Not mine. David says not his. Okay. <laughs> so the vodka goes back in the freezer. Jerry, got that champagne. And you got that champagne here. So David just wanted champagne for his. There we go. Oh, cool, mess. He's on. And then here we go for Angie and I. Again, for all you late joiners, this is frozen blueberries, a splash of vodka, and champagne. It's called the Katie, named after Katie Campbell of Knoxville, Tennessee. <laughs> Josh says hi. Joshy! Kako Masi is on. All right, so Angie. Yes. Cheers, my love. Cheers, my Cheers. friend. I'm so glad to see you in person. So glad. We Cheers, will be guys. drunk behind the camera for the rest of the day. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Hello, let me clean up the mess somebody left behind. <laughs> All right, all right. So, have a seat, Ange. Okay. I like to see the voice. This is a little set up, right? We're the voice behind the camera. So, look, here we got. We got um, Sean is here. That's David's sister. Jerry, as you can see. RBL is Ryan Bondi Lynch in Portland, oh, Oregon. Man. Yeah. He's lolly. He says, oh, God. Jerry says, eyes, eyes, eyes. From, she knows how to do a toast, that one. She, she never forgets. I have to give her kudos for that. She's intense. She is intense. So, cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Eyes, eyes, cheers. eyes, 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 eyes. Cheers to a few who are out there who might be drinking with us. <sighs> All right, Spiky, what are you going to cook today? All right. Hello, good morning, good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to Over the Counter with David. I'm David. That was not David. <laughs> So today we are going to be making my favorite pasta. It's a red sauce and a white sauce that I personally like to put on the pasta and mix. Jeremy just likes the red sauce, some people just like the white, so it'll be um, eat it as you enjoy. Also going to make some chicken to go in that because I like to have some protein with my starches. And um, let's see what else. 
I think that's spaghetti really squash. the main thing. What? Spaghetti, spaghetti squash. squash. Oh yeah. We're gonna cook this spaghetti squash for Jeremy's pasta, and I'm going to boil noodles for mine. Um, one thing that has come up is, are these props or are these real? <laughs> So to prove the reality of some of these nut props, I'm going to start by making an unannounced bruschetta as an appetizer so that they have something to cushion that alcohol that they'll be consuming all day. Because we are starving. Yes. <laughs> Angie all told me she only came for the bruschetta, by the way. It's uh, true. I can never true. say no. Never say no. Never and say David's no. bruschetta is particularly good. All right. So Carrie I'm says, to... oh, your sauce mix. And Carrie Lehman says she loves hourglasses, meaning Angie and I and also David's hair. Oh, oh yeah. Notice anything different? Yeah. Is there a name for when you mix a white and red sauce together? Neapolitan. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Or there's also the kind of already mixed vodka sauce, but that has usually vodka also, and I'm not doing that. I'm making mine in two separate sauces so you can mix what it is that you're interested in. We have our vodka we sauce. We have our vodka sauce already. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Andy. Oh, it's so fun to eat this, but it's also even better to get with someone. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> Last week and I just sat on my own counter and watched. Yeah. Oh, uh, Ryan says bruschetta is better. <laughs> and Jerry right. said, I may have read this already, but oh, that sauce mix. She's had your sauce mix and she That's loves it. Right. It's really, really good. When I was um, uh, just keep younger, and uh, believe it or not, um, we lived in Guam. We were there for about 15 years. And at a restaurant in Guam, Capricios as it was, um, it was actually a Japanese chain. And they had the best red sauce to that point that I'd ever had. It was a little bit spicy and very garlicky. And we would often mix it with this um, salmon uh, linguine in a cream sauce. And that was kind of the idea and the basis where I started working on my own to come up with something that I thought would be excellent to have as well. Do you like puttanesca? What is yeah. puttanesca? What is that, by the way? It's a like... red sauce with okay. olives and capers and red pepper flakes. Yeah. That sounds great. It's very good. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of what you were talking about. Spank, you've got more comments about how they love your blue hair. Taryn says that. Taryn Swizzle. <laughs> love that blue hair. Is this Taryn from BC? Unknown. Or another Taryn. Taryn, feel free to chime in. Taryn, let us know. <laughs> so Inquiring Taren, mind. How are you doing? <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. Ryan Bonnie Lynch, since you're here, what's it like down there in Portland? And also, uh, I hope you're not speaking to Colton still. <laughs> That's Sober jabbing right there. I know, right? It's like, Wait, sure. that's oddly personal. <laughs> oddly on the internet. Let's air it out. <laughs> yeah, Terrence. I'm just trying to make him uncomfortable and laugh, which, by the way, I have a really uncanny knack of doing. Also, right. Taryn says, yeah, it's Taryn from BC. Taryn, yay! From Vancouver, who we love. Ouch, Taryn. <laughs> All right, so for this bruschetta, I'm going to um, actually saute some onions and a little garlic in pesto to soften them up because I've never been a fan of raw onions personally. I know that's just a personal, personal preference. So What? You don't, don't like you guys don't like onions? I don't like I raw onions. On my tongue for so long. Yeah. Like I I'm like still tasting onions hours later. David, is that why you don't like them? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Yeah. It's a yes. <laughs> So what are you doing there, David? I'm just yeah. roughly mincing up some garlic to put in with the onions and stuff. When you say roughly mince, what does that mean? I'm not too concerned if it's all exactly the same size. Just little slivers and chunks is good for what I need. If I wanted to um, finely mince or mash the garlic, that would be something if I need to put it into a sauce and have it meld all the way through. But part of the fun of eating things like a bruschetta is the bright and different flavors. So what do you have, like a tablespoon of garlic? Two uh, tablespoons? It's two cloves. Yeah. Two cloves. Two cloves. Is that how you measure garlic by the clove? Yes. I Typically. Not, unless, I it's, unless it's um, been mashed or squashed and, you know, if you put it through a press or manually do it. Um, hey, Taryn in BC, I got a question for you. How is Steve? 
So Steve, her husband, and I talked together in Japan. Oh, fun. Yeah. We were just talking about that experience. We were just talking about Japan, and as Jerry knows, it's all I can talk about. Right? Wait, hold on. Did you guys know? Did you know that I lived in Japan and I went to grad school in Japan? <laughs> Jerry wants to know, Angie, how is your newfound freedom? Well, I am out and about. Out and about? It's in, in a boot. Ooh, in a boot. <laughs> Taryn will like that. Taryn will like that. Oh, does, <laughs> Taryn. All right. Uh, Jerry's cracking jokes. Did you know? Uh, Steve is great, Taryn says. We are listening to you in the car. Well, oh. Taryn, I mean, you can't see us, so uh, you're, missing, you're missing out. You're missing out the experience, babe. I mean, I look phenomenal today. It's true. And you Angie should looks see insane. my blue hair. Angie I looks got amazing. ready. And you got ready for the first time in two months. By the way, I'm wearing a bra. You are? I am. I am too. I might take it off later, though. I might too. Let's wear them. I forgot. These are uncomfortable. Why are, are we in why them? Why are you in them? Let, let those boobs fly. I will. Okay. <laughs> So, so, huh? that so I've chopped the onions, I've chopped the garlic. I'm using a, a quick, like, canned, jarred pesto that I had in the pantry. Um, you can go to the effort of making your own if you want. I just had it, and it makes life a lot easier. So I'm going to put a couple good, like a quarter of a cup of pesto in a little pan. And you prefer to buy pesto or make pesto? Well... Sometimes you don't have time. That's it true. Tastes fine, okay, out of a jar. So yeah. I had it, and rather than go to all the effort of making it just to do that, I was. Just for a little bit. Just, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, David, your mother's here, and she says she really likes your hair. Um, and Taryn says that she's watching, and Steve is keeping his eyes on the road. Right. I love it. I love it. Steve, be safe. You've got precious cargo, my friend. Also, David's mom, I have wanted to meet you for so long. Oh, what? So I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Your mom. What about her? I've wanted to meet her. Oh, that's true. So Mama Wani, we talk about you quite a lot in all glowing, flattering terms, and our friend Angie is curious to meet you. It's true. So yeah. the next time you're in town, we'll have to set up a little dinner. Or Mama. I'm crashing Thanksgiving. Cra come on over. Come to Thanksgiving. That would be great. That also, would be awesome. Mama Wani is pretty great, and, and she's a super intellectual powerhouse and amazing. That's what I hear. Yeah. Her theology, in particular. Right. Oh, right. I mean, she stood up in the middle of the Vatican and gave communion. That's the big. That's kind of the ballsiest. That's right. It's the ballsiest yes, thing I've ever heard of. It really, honestly, is. Uh, lady boss, I think is what that. Oh, it's lady boss. Like lady you're boss. You're talking about like a uh, rap video yes. we talked about earlier. Yeah. Keeping a theme. I like weaving things back throughout. Wait, and we have arrived. Oh. Uh, and Jerry, David says. Oh, sorry. David, Jerry says, have you ever made pesto with dead nettles? A no. Northwest native plant, I've never heard of that. What's a dead nettle? Um, a stinging nettle is what stinging I think. Stinging nettles. I know that they sell them at the at Pike Market. Yeah. I saw them for sale this, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? yeah. Kind of a big time of year for them. So they grow underneath trees. The bottom yeah. of the leaf has uh, some hairy like substance that stings a little, um, but they're really good to eat. Hey David, Jean yep. from San Francisco is on. Jean Kavanaugh, love her. Jean Triangle. Jean and I, Jean and I are in a band together. What? She plays like Triangle. <laughs> she plays Triangle. She plays Triangle. And you play. And I just scream. Poor <laughs> <laughs> <Or> cowbell. <laughs> I'll join and I'll be the cowbell. You, uh, well, yeah. Jean's very. She, it's hard. It's hard to um, win her over, but I have a good. I can I can put a good word in for you. Yeah. Uh, David, like that'll do anything. Yeah, David, Jerry says that those uh, dead nettles, they grow like weeds here. Yeah. Uh, and she wants to know, is Angie using her hands to talk? And of course, Jerry, you know her well. She absolutely is. But just one hand, because my other hand has a drink in it. Just one hand, that's right. Um, yeah. And David, you have a question that, have you ever considered making pesto with shamrocks? That was clearly a uh, uh, a joke from our Jean Irish grandma uh, chick. <laughs> well, you can make um, pesto with... The traditional way is pine nuts and basil and olive oil, but you can make it with almonds or some people use mint in it. There's a lot of variations. How do you make pesto, Angie? With basil and pine nuts. Basil and pine nuts? Yeah. That's already pre-packaged from the grocery store in a jar like what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm doing is I lightly salted and peppered the onions and pesto. And I'm just putting it through until the onions get clarified or they become clear instead of bright light. 
It does look good. It does smell good. Yeah, it does smell very good. So here's what they look like as they're cooking. You can see it. There you go. Perfect. And I will say, those tomatoes do look beautiful. The victim tomatoes Sean called out last week. Yeah. They're perfect tomatoes. Sean, his sister, was when he, or someone said, he grabbed a tomato and he started cutting it. Someone was like, I thought those were fake. Because look how bright they look, right? Yeah. But I did say this last week, and I'll say it again. These tomatoes are very good. We do have great produce in the Northwest, but southern tomatoes are better. Yeah. Um, well, they get more sunshine. They get more sunshine, except, except for tomatoes in Georgia are not good because of all the red clay in the soil. Oh. They just have a weird taste to me. Um, uh -huh. But I do like them in it from pretty much anywhere else. Yeah. Are you a fan of just like a tomato with salt on it? A tomato with Jeremy, salt on it. Can you give me that white and green yeah. bowl I can mix this in? Yes, yeah. sir, I'll get that for you. But Angie, to answer your question, we slice up tomato slices and have them as sides for dinner yeah. pretty much almost every night. Yeah, in my family, so I'm from Indiana, we used to do that with breakfast and yeah. lunch and dinner. It was just a plate of ah. cut tomatoes with salt on them. Yes. Yeah. David actually is not a huge fan of salads and vegetables in general, but he loves tomatoes. He loves a caprese salad. Ooh, yeah. I do. Jerry says she thinks it's the humidity that makes a good tomato. Actually, Jerry, that's a really good point. Yeah. Jerry would know since she just planted herself a whole orchard. Jerry is our local orchard grower. She, she is like the native edible plant person. She oh, sure is. Yeah, and she's just, you know, what I love most about her is that she sits in that chair watching over her vast orchard <laughs> and judging and her neighbor. Her and she's like, excuse me, uh, you two have me, this house next to us has too many cars. Yeah. Jake, bring me a drink. <laughs> Josh, hush. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, do your homework. <laughs> right? Um, because Josh will have already done his. Because Josh is, no, Josh is giving well, homework to the really teachers. Is. Yes. Josh is deciding to tell him, Josh should be. Power delegation. Yeah, Josh, Josh is like, let me lead, let me, let me manage up. <laughs> He's already, that's a skill that a lot of people don't have. It's a skill most people don't have. Ryan wanted to shout out to my sexy arm shot when I handed over the uh, bowl there. Oh. Ryan, you want something oh. real special? Yeah, do it. <laughs> Show it. So if you don't have pesto handy, you can just put um, olive oil in the pan, chop up the onions, do an extra clove or two of garlic, and if you have basil, mince it up, or you can even use dried basil. You just need to cook it more slowly and for a longer time so that it kind of rehydrates the moisture from the onions and the oil will re-enlighten the leaves a little bit. All right, so we're going to take our lovely victim tomato. <laughs> it made you laugh so I know, so <laughs> I've never heard of anybody who'd made a hot based pesto, uh, uh, Warm? Bruschetta before. Oh, Were you? Yeah. But it really worked well, I think. I'm just going to stir this together. And this is our snack for the day, huh? Yep. Thank you, David. I really like that bowl. You're Isn't welcome. Cute? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so uh, 1950s. Like, doesn't Jerry have some of these? I don't know, but I love that. I have a set of three of those bowls. They're like nesting bowls. I got them from a vintage store in Blue Ridge, Georgia. Ooh. Yes. What drew you to it? All right. I like the color and the shape. And yeah. I like the vintage vibe. Mm. Right? Yeah. OK. So. Somebody want to come over and taste it? And Angie, we'll do you're it up. up. On camera. <laughs> oh, while you're up, give yourself more drink. <laughs> I'll bring your glass and I'll pour some more champagne in. Do you want more blueberries? You want me to come to the side yeah, come over here and you can make all the appropriate, oh my god, this is amazing faces, or not. Because the reality is, and the goal of the show is to show real cooking success or failure and how to deal with the adversity and how to rise to the moment of success. It's so applicable to so many things in life. <laughs> Rise Particularly rise. rap videos. Right. Well, definitely rap videos. They always show overcoming challenges. Don't they? Uh, I'm just using some of this vodka, right? Please, yeah. yeah. All right, here it goes. Mm. All right, so it's everything you thought it was, but more because I can smell it in your camp. <laughs> so good. Right. It's 
so good. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge fan of the onions, so I kind of like um, work around them. But I love the flavor that they give. Mm -hmm. And after about 15 or 20 minutes of um, resting, the salt and the um, the oil and everything, primarily the salt, is going to draw some of the moisture out of the um, out of the tomatoes, mm -hmm. and so there'll be a liquid in the bottom. And I love to dip my bread into the juice even dunk. more <laughs> than I like to. Uh, Jerry, that was for you. That's, That's for you, Jerry. It's called dunking. I actually really like the onions a lot because they absorb the flavor of the pesto. Right. So good. Really good. Yeah. Mm. Can I take this? And go sit back down. There's no champagne. Do you want me to take this and go sit back down? Yeah, bring it over to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe David, grab us a couple of plates, if you don't mind. Don't mind at all. Here's a sexy shot for you, Ryan. <laughs> Where should we put this? Excuse <laughs> me. Excuse me. Um, just let's see. Angie. On one of those. Well, hello, everybody. Your Jeremy's restaurant. trying to move the hot spot from the light. Yeah, <laughs> you've got like a glare. Yeah. It's not any better that way. This is the best restaurant I've been to in two months. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right? So we've like completed our eighth week of stay at home almost awesomeness. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. There we go. Yeah. And no, I got it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So the main course now. We're going to make the red sauce, going to make a spaghetti squash for Jeremy, going to make a white sauce to go with the red sauce and boil up some pasta. So first, we'll just get the spaghetti squash going. If you have a bread knife, it's your best friend for starting a spaghetti squash. If not, then a very sharp chef knife will work, but um, you just Cut through, cut it in half, ish. I kind of split it funny, but that's totally fine. Let me clean this off, it's all done. Do you like spaghetti squash or you just prefer I make it for Jeremy because he likes to, um, he likes it. Yeah. So I'm not a huge fan myself. I don't like any squash. Maybe I should admit that, but it's true. I think that's okay. I think a uh, spaghetti squash I want to like, but it's always so watery. Right. Yeah. Well, there is a lot of moisture in it. So, split it in half. First thing you need to do is, it's like a pumpkin, it's a hard squash, and it has a stringy seed mass in the middle that you're going to want to um, scoop out. Oh my gosh, it smells so good in here. Doesn't it? Oh, yeah. It really does. What was that? Angie said she wants to curl up and live in the bowl of bruschetta. Yeah. It's so much better than you Hi, Ryan. Than from something that simple. We have had bruschetta parties in the past where we made like five different types. And, oh, really? Yeah. So Ryan says you can also make squash with butter and brown sugar. Yeah. Also, David, tell him about what you do with the pumpkin seeds. Or the, or the, the, sorry, squash, the, seeds. the squash seeds. Right. So I'll just... Um, once we take them out, we'll, we can separate the, the root, the, the seed filaments from the seeds themselves, rinse the seeds off, and then we can toast them in the oven, just like you make roasted pumpkin seeds. All squashes that have these seeds do the same thing. David Spake does this for us a lot, and I love them. Yeah. Oh, right, David, so your dad is here. Hi, Dad. And he says, did you reveal the name of the third voice? Well. You missed the intro. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so that is our friend Angie, who has been trapped three blocks away by herself for eight weeks. Yes. So she's over here because... So Jeremy decided that if she's been trapped at home and going out less than we did. Right. So we need to see people. Yes. 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 Cheers, Angie. Cheers. So, um, just so everyone who's watching and didn't know, um, Angie and I are sitting here on the couch drinking um, a concoction of, we'll show you a little bit later, but it's vodka, champagne, and frozen blueberries, which is quite delicious. And I'm just having the champagne and the blueberries. So, what you'll do, take a, take a baking dish. 
This is a 13 by 9. Um, just put the squash down, face down. It's not necessary, but you can put a couple tablespoons of water in it to help steam it along. We're going to bake it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 40 minutes. 30, 30 minutes to an hour, it depends on the size. This is a very small one. And a larger one you might want to push a little longer. We'll just have to deal with it, it's what it is. Can you turn that back? No, no, the okay. camera thing. Is that better? Yes. Yeah. So you probably want to mark on the floor where these should be set up and just redo the same place every yeah. week. Right. I have a lot of good ideas. <laughs> I only have good ideas. I just wish the world would listen to me. <laughs> it's amazing how many of the good ideas become things for me to do. <laughs> Someone has to execute. Someone has to execute, David. All right. So I just put a light thing of tin foil over the top. If you have a way to seal a pan that isn't disposable that works for you, that's fine. Just trying to keep some of the steam in here so that the moisture will stay in the pan as these squashes cook. All right. 400 degree oven. We'll set a timer for 40 minutes. Do you want us to do timers? Yeah, we can sure. do timers. Why don't you guys do the timer? Right, yeah. Okay, Put us to work. Yeah. We're more All than right. pretty faces. Right. <laughs> What was that? Angie says we're more than pretty faces. Right? All right. I'm not so sure about me. But sure yeah. you are. You're the idea generator. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for the red sauce, we need to mince, or actually I'm not going to mince. We're going to do slices of garlic so that um, they look like cross sections of the garlic itself because I like the way that looks. Hey David, Carrie Lehman yeah. uh, just sent me a photo of her. She's an optometrist, so she right. works uh, and makes open and they're working today in Tennessee. And she just said that she's between patients, sneaking and watching you. Oh, yeah. Here's a picture of her with all of her oh, how with all of her uh, protective PPE. Or PPP, PPE on. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. So normally I just smash the garlic really hard to take the the paper off, but because I cut whoops as I. I'm talking, I mindlessly do it. I don't want to as much this time because I actually enjoy the look of the cross section of garlic as it's cooking or as it's in the sauce. Jerry, we're just laughing at our text string. Um, also, David's dad. Um, I consider this mental therapy. <laughs> if that tells you anything about <laughs> where I'm at in life. <laughs> Dave, uh, David, your dad said, so there's an, o there's, she's there for an overdose of loud company, meaning he thinks I'm loud company, <laughs> which is which true, which is actually true. Uh, hope she doesn't need any mental therapy after the show. Well, in, in she just said, mm -hmm. this, this is, is my mental this therapy. This is for therapy. <laughs> I plan to stumble back to my right. condo and then just watch movies the rest of the day. Amazing. That's a great I'm so happy. With a great plan. Thank you. Did you know, so when you had your movie day recently, yep. did you watch uh, the Godfather series? So I do have a list of movies I like to watch during quarantine, and the Godfather series is one of them because yeah. I've never seen any of them, and I feel like that's kind of like some of those classic things of American right. cinema that everyone should see. Um, but I've yet to get around to watching it because I've just been so busy. <laughs> <laughs> so busy watching other things. <laughs> Actually, we haven't watched much TV this we last week at all. We actually have hardly watched any tele television during quarantine. Have you been yeah. reading? Reading, I'm working, yeah. and just hanging out, and listening. To, I've been listening to a lot of music. That's yeah. great. And uh, we, actually, last night we just talked all night. Oh my gosh! Novel, novel thing. So Crazy. <laughs> Throwback. Yeah. It's like you're dating again. Right. Talking late into the night. All right. Like so I'm. Um, PO two four six eight. I'm gonna go for nine because for ten. I love garlicky red sauce, and that's what I'm putting together for us. Hey Jerry, question for you. Can you just let us know? Can you hear everybody okay? Yeah, that's a good question. So you prefer the taste of garlic to the taste of uncooked onions? Right. I don't like uncooked garlic either. Mm -hmm. But but um, I love garlic. I like what onions give 
flavor-wise. So I'm just making slivers, like these are almond slivers, except they're garlic. Careful at the end that you don't cut your fingers. David Celery Jones is here, and she um, hey. added a emoji of a shark in the chat. Oh, is that from my hair? And she says, oh my gosh, just Aww. talked all night. You guys are darling. I miss you. Thank you. Well, Celery, we are darling, and so are you. <laughs> and we miss you too. And by the way, Celery, I think that you particularly will like David's blue hair, if you can notice that. Because Celery changes her hair color quite a lot as well. Ooh. Yeah. I like that. Uh, and she said, no, it was a fish head, not a shark. I'm going with shark, Celery. We're going to stick with shark. We can't tell because... Oh, I thought it was like a shark fin for my hair. No, it's just a little... Uh, <laughs> now, but by the way, that would have been a better emoji. Yeah. Celery, you've got to... Up your game. <laughs> celery, up your game. <laughs> Is that a Santa? Is that a Santa? <laughs> Hold on. There's a lot going on in that Santa. i got to get closer. It's a Santa doing what exactly? I'm pretty sure. Giving a thumbs up. Yeah. Celery, that came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your randomness, by the way. It's one of my favorite things about you. Next, we'll get an Easter Bunny, like, I don't know, injecting Clorox. But probably not, because you just predicted that. See? See? You never know. Well, oh, have you met me? <laughs> I actually have not Celery. Celery, you need to meet our friend Angie sitting here on the couch with me. She's pretty f incredible. But I don't change my hair regularly. The cool yeah. thing is, well, it has like gone shorter style. before and That's longer. True. I actually like your hair as it is. Change nothing about it. It's perfect. Hey. I'm not I, even kidding. That's what, that is what I say to myself every morning when I look in the mirror change, and I make eye contact. Change and say, nothing. Change nothing. nothing nope. More perfect. That's exactly what everyone, <laughs> by the way, that's what I do. That's what I do every morning, too. <laughs> what was that? Term? Look in the mirror and say, change nothing. You're perfect. <laughs> right? All right. So, as you can see, I've made like little slices, sections of garlic rather than a mince or a chop. Yum. It's only aesthetic, but I think it's nice. Celery sent a uh, emoji of octopus. It looks really good. But also, a um, little fun fact, Celery um, is an amazing artist, like over the top, really badass. And she did all of the interior artwork for the HG, HGTV Dream Home in Gig Harbor. No way. She sure did. That's yeah. incredible. She's incredible. And she says she can smell that garlic. Okay. I can sure smell it. <laughs> and I now I smell, smell like it. it. You smell like it? You smell like garlic? I do. Actually, I'm going to save this one for the white sauce. I'm going to use a large onion in the red sauce. So, just sliced up the 8 to 10 cloves of garlic. In our case, it was 10. <laughs> Just break down this onion real quickly. It's best if you're cooking to get all of your um, chopping and all of that preparation done before you actually go to the heat because you may not have time to get everything done. So when you're cooking, if you're not um, familiar with it or you don't do it a lot, be sure to look over the recipe before you begin find out what all your steps are that you're going to need to take to prepare your food and then get all the ingredients prepared and then start putting them on the fire and heating them up. So that is one of my biggest problems when it comes to cooking. Do you remember David when I did those uh, meal box yes. things and I would just go step by step in the recipe and then I not, would not realize that there were other things that I should be doing at the same time. Right. So I really, literally just read step one, do this, step two, do this, and then yeah. I would just keep going same. and then realize, oh, there are other things that I could have been doing at right. the same time. Well, it makes me wonder why it's put in that step order, right? Mm -hmm. Is there a better way of formatting the recipe so that you have prep work as one and then... Well, a lot of times the recipes will say one large onion chopped. Right garlic minced, and the idea is like that, that you're doing that ahead of time. Yeah. This particular one, when I typed it into the website, did it give those ingredient level instructions. I do that's a good innovative way to think about recipes. Yeah. Here's phase one, phase, phase two. Phase one, yeah. Yeah. A Thor phase approach to uh, cooking. <laughs> Says somebody who's in the business of getting uh, somebody up to speed on software. That's exactly my job. <laughs> yeah. I sure do love logistics. Uh, Jean Iris says, appreciating David's knife skills and cleanliness. Same. Jean, thank you for noticing his cleanliness. I'm throwing onions on the floor right now. <laughs> and he does have amazing knife skills, actually. Um, he's pretty adept. 
with knives. Especially the daggers that come out of his eyes when he looks at me. <laughs> daggers of love. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, well. Jean, right. I wish you were here, my love. Let's see. Garlic, some that. Okay, so we're going to need a quarter cup of basil. I know it seems a lot, but I like, as I said before, I really like um, bold flavors, not as subtle. And one of the biggest problems I have with a lot of recipes is there's just not enough flavor to them. So you'll notice that when I put mine up, there's a lot of garlic, a lot of onion, a lot of herbs, a lot of spices for the most part. And that's to give it a more robust and full flavor. What I like about your cooking too is it's not just a lot of salt. Right. Which some people think it's flavor. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. You do have to have a, enough salt for it to, to, to work. But you have to have your salt and your acids and your sweetening, all, everything kind of in balance so that it's not overwhelming with any one thing or the other. Hey, what's that show, Salt, Fire? I was just thinking that book. What was that called, David? Salt, Acid, Fire, Heat. Oh, that's it. Salt, salt Acid, fat. fat. Or Salt, Fat, yeah. Acid, yeah. Is there a fourth element? There is a fourth. Heat. Salt, Heat. Yeah. Salt, Acid, is it, Fat, Heat, yeah. or something like it's that. It's a show on Netflix, too. Oh. Yeah, they made a show out of it. It's a book? Sure, 90% of creating content that's visual is half of book based. Oh, come the more on. I'm finding out something I, think I, I right. love, I think you're right. and then I realize that it's not a book. Yep, I think you're right. Yeah. The written word starts over here. Uh, cheers to our libraries. Here, here. The written word. Cheers to the written word. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. Oh, Angie right. has a pretty impressive library, I must say. Yeah, I think mine may actually be slightly bigger than yours, oh. which is impressive. I'm good. You know that library. I know I'm very, very, very. And in the case of libraries, size does matter. Size that matters. Here. Size yeah. matters in everything. Yeah. That's not lie. All right. Functionality also matters. So I just put about two tablespoons of oil in the little pan. I'm going to saute the onions and the garlic. I would normally put it into the pot first and then just kind of add everything to it, but I can't show the pot as easily. So. <laughs> David, of your recipes, I've noticed that the red sauce is called David's no longer secret red sauce. Are there recipes that you are not willing to share with us? Great question, Angie. No, it's just a matter of getting them all out, the things that I have come up with myself. So this particular recipe is 100% a David creation. So Your chili I, was too. Yeah, in my chili. Um, so it's a matter of just time to get them put online. Yeah. So you're not, there's nothing that you're going to keep secrets secret. No, no. I'm right. not going to like hide away the one secret that actually makes it amazing. I am not my grandmother. So can I just say, I have a different philosophy to that. I love secrets. I do. I like being in the know on secrets. <laughs> <laughs> I actually oh. don't like it when people keep secrets from me. I like just be oh, I want to be told secrets, and I but I don't want to share secrets. No, I don't either. Unless yeah. it's a Jerry. A Jerry, I'll share secrets I with. Will or you. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, uh, hold on. Uh, David, Carrie yes. says she's going to ask a question early because she's in between patients. Sure. And she read the ingredient list. She wants to know how do we decide to put cranberry jelly in? What are you talking about? <laughs> Someone's reading ahead. Right? Somebody read <laughs> the recipe. <laughs> Spoiler alert. She has a good reason, though. She has a great reason, and also she's insanely smart. And right. she's been cooking along. Whoa, um, I was thinking about the flavor of tomatoes, and tomatoes tend to be sometimes very sweet or very salty if you buy prepared tomatoes. And I was looking for something that would add a little bit of interesting depth, because the tomato is actually a fruit, not a vegetable, right? So I was thinking, what would be another fruit that has a um, flavor profile that would fit in together with the tomato, but wouldn't be like um, orange juice? So I was looking at it and I found that and I had tasted some and I thought it has a little bit of a bite to it, a little bit of an acidic side. It has a different richness that you don't get out of tomatoes. And I was wanting to make a robust sauce and that is really kind of the way it just played out in my head. Carrie says you're an overachiever. I agree. <laughs> um, also, you know that I love cranberries. Mm -hmm. uh, and your sister says, hey David, come play D3 after your stream. Oh. D3? Okay. What's D, what is D3? It's uh, Diablo. It's a, 
It's a it's the other game we used to play together a lot. So Dave is a big gamer, G A Y N E R. <laughs> Hashtag. Hashtag. <laughs> powder that you can buy for canning Ooh. and it has some dextrose in it to sweeten it a little bit to counteract the bitterness that the oh. acid has. What is so, it again? It's called fresh fruit protector but it's really just the citric acid and a little bit of sugar. Mm -hmm. huh. So I actually use this if I slice an avocado for Jeremy you know that an avocado will oxidize and it'll turn brown. Mm -hmm. If you put citric acid on it so you can do lemon if you have a lemon open yeah. but if you don't need to cut a lemon just to put a few drops on your avocado, yeah. you can just do a light dusting of the acid powder, and it does the exact same thing and keeps it from browning. David, speaking of lemons, tell us when it's time to make a lemon drop dot. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, let me get this sauce uh, on the on the pot. First. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. So while these continue to saute, I'm browning them a little because the caramelization adds more flavor. So I missed this earlier, but Jerry called them Ekman Orchards, <laughs> uh, which is hilarious. <laughs> Wearing her overalls. Like, Wearing her the overalls. Way, we purchased when we did a lip sync to No Diggity No Doubt. All right. Yeah, I see you the video. I want to see that. Oh yeah. I'll show you. Okay. You and Jerry did that? Yeah. When was this? It was a Moss Adams competition. Okay, amazing. I love this yeah. already. And um it was nothing a better than a corporate talent show. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and it was a lip sync competition and Jerry and I, it was like instantly we're doing it together and it's no diggity. Of course. And we split up the part and then we um You two are like simpatico. Oh yeah. yeah. And then we orchestrated a group of backup dancers too somehow. I don't even know how we could talk people into doing anything when we were at home. <laughs> so we work as Jerry is very persuasive, also intimidating. Yes, it's, right. It's usually she just kind of like, I'll just do whatever she it. says because I don't want to make her mad at me. No, and because she has great ideas. And also she's saying she's <laughs> smart. Yes. yes, so we decided, we put this all together, we got outfits beforehand, we went and did two shots, we came back. Nobody stood a chance against them. No one stood a chance against you two. No. Have you seen Jerry Hip Hop Dance? Have you no. seen it? I've had no. video. Play on, play on. <laughs> Alright. That's all I have to say. So, here's how I cooked all the onions and the garlic. A little bit browned and awesome. So, I'll oh, transfer these into the actual sauce pot that we'll be making the sauce in. It smells very good. It looks beautiful and it smells beautiful. 
We have 22 minutes left on our timer. For the spaghetti squash. Right. So, Angie, speaking of hip hop dancing, mm -hmm. did you know that Jerry did a hip hop dance uh, during a basketball game in college at Oglethorpe and was banned? Banned? Uh huh. Yeah. Because it was too suggestive. <laughs> so, I would like you to uh, ask her about that later. Jerry, we're going to Jerry, have to do this. Jerry, one day when you come over and the quarantine is fully lifted and we can do more than phase one um, <laughs> mingling, <laughs> then um, we'll have you guys do that as the intro while Jeremy makes a drink. Yes! <laughs> I well, love that. Because the, right. the dance that I've seen Jerry do is the one that she pulled out of her back pocket for her cheerleader audition. Oh, from our from when we were here together? Yes. Oh, yes. that's what I have on video. Oh, right. Yeah. You do. Oh, I'll be right. so I'm saving great. it for her birthday. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I have four cans of tomato sauce. Mentioned it before. Um, they're not all the same brand because most of us end up shopping and picking things up at different times. Anyway, I tend to use crushed tomatoes or tomato puree when I cook. But the main thing I'm looking for is the sodium content. Try not to go above 80 or 90 per serving because the sauce will actually reduce and the amount of sodium and salt that you get out of any given bite will be concentrated. And so it's better to start with a low salt start. Um, and then add salt as you cook. Smart. Yep. You can always add so that you can control it. It's a lot harder to pull salt back out of the salt <laughs> than it is to put it in. You can um, reduce a little bit of salt in a dish if you realize you've over salted it and you don't have any more sauce or something to like stretch it. You put a um, peel of potato and Chop it roughly so that you can find it. You can, um, these two are dying on the couch and it's a little... Because I burped. I'm sorry we're distracting oh. you, but I burped and it was gross. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Andy, you can't stop laughing. I think he went to say something. I did. I, I, tried, I was trying to try and say something, but a burp came out ah. instead. And it was just really funny. Well, because the bruschetta is so good. Yeah. <laughs> they have been eating bruschetta this whole time between... between um, every time they talk. <laughs> it's true. It's very good. We haven't even made it done in this bowl either. It's time for another drink for me. I think so. Oh. Also, the bruschetta has gotten to the point of the juice in the bottom of the pool. That Hi, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just clean out all the vegetable bits that I have sitting in the sink while Jeremy mixes. So I'm going to come back to um, our drink from earlier, for those of you who missed it. Um, it's a drink called the Katie, named after my friend Katie Campbell. It's my mess. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? We can see your mouth. Oh, I know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Social distancing. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to make my drink here. And again, this is crushed up, well not crushed up, excuse me, frozen blueberries. Mm -hmm. Oh, we already put those in the bag. But I just typically do a little splash of vodka. A splash is like half a bottle, maybe. <laughs> you know, to taste. And then these are the blueberries that we Our soaked in vodka. vodka earlier. Let's add a little bit of those at the end. Pardon me, my love. Champagne. Champers! A healthy pour. Cheers. All right. All right. So I do have some fresh basil. Ooh. Save them a little bit to maybe be fancy on the pasta, if I remember. But we will... Um, Mince this up for the basil for the sauce. The so David, in some cooking shows, I noticed that the cook also gets to sample what they've made. Right. On TV, would you like me to frame you some of your bruschetta? Will you dip a piece of bread in and make it soapy and put yep. like a good tomato, tomato piece on it? Yep. You want the white or the brown? White. Mm -hmm. All right. And I did just wash my hands. 
So for cutting basil, I'm just ripping the big chunks of stem off because it's a little not so pleasant to eat when you get these big stringy stems. The easiest way to cut it is actually kind of pile it up. And then roll the massive leaves into a little tube. And now I, you're in what? <laughs> anyway, so I've made a little package of all of the basil, or the bulk of the basil. And so now I'm going to just slice down. And this will give me, if I can get it to hold right, nice little ribbons of basil. Notice that when you chop basil, you want to slide your knife. Don't just push down because pushing down is just going to bruise it. It's not going to actually slice it necessarily. Now that I've got the first chop on it, is that for me? It's for you. Where would you like it? Over here. I'll just grab a bite. Sure. All right. Mm. A little soggy. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, uh, David. Yes. Your sister asks, do you mm. ever make fresh pasta sauce with those beautiful <laughs> fake looking tomatoes? Not with these fake looking tomatoes. <laughs> but when we lived in Atlanta and we could buy bulk produce at the farmer's market, um, I would buy cases of tomatoes oh, wow. and grind them down and make my own sauce. I was wondering how you got enough produce for canning. Hmm? I said, I wonder how you got enough produce for canning. But yeah. Was that on the Greenville? Uh, we, oh no, we lived in a neighborhood called Gresham Park, which is a little bit like near East Atlanta. Okay. Uh, but there is a farmers market in Atlanta called the DeKalb County Farmers Market. It is David insane. It is the best market I've ever been to. I agree. Wow. It's insane. It's so good. There is like a whole section of just spices. Basically, it's a sixty thousand square foot. It's the biggest grocery store. It's the biggest wow. indoor grocery store in America, in North America, but it's all local farmers. Wow. Well, that's incredible. Local farmers were possible and they have a lot of international food. Oh, and they make their own stuff. So they have their, their own, there's their own bakery there. And it's, it's like everything's organic and they're like the people there are making it that day and they're putting out cakes for you. Oh, I mean, it's the best cool. place. Yeah. I mean, Whole Foods is like, I've got nothing on that place. Well, Whole Foods is owned by Amazon now, so they literally have nothing. <laughs> There you go. Yes. Oh, Jean says, finally, poor David gets something to eat. I know, Jean. I know. Right? Sorry, Jean. We're very, very... Um... We were waiting for the tomatoes to get juicy. That's right. We were waiting for the bruschetta to really, juicy. truly set in. Yeah, the way he likes it. That the way he likes it. Thank you. Right. It was really... We're looking out for him. His okay. own best interest. It's all for me. <laughs> it was the luck of the Irish. Everything's all for you, Dave. And Jean, as Angie said, if you couldn't hear her, it's just the luck of the Irish. <laughs> right? All right, so I put the basil in. Quarter cup of basil. Bay leaves or basil? Two bay leaves. Bay leaves. So, or actually, these are very small, so I'm going to put a couple more in. Normally, a bay leaf is a couple inches long, and these are like one inch bay leaves. So, putting more in. One of the things about bay leaves is the bay leaf itself doesn't really have any flavor, but it does have chemicals that cause other herbs to release their flavor oh. better. So you have a, a more um, umami flavor from a bay leaf, even though the bay leaf itself doesn't have any flavor particularly. I, I did not know that either. Yeah. I also love the word umami. Umami. Okay. So a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about favorite words. Mm -hmm. My favorite word is extrapolate. Your favorite word is? Unconstitutional. Unconstitutional is your favorite word? It is my favorite Isn't word. Isn't that also just life in general today? Yeah. I, I'm, well, so I formed this favorite word back in like the fifth grade. Okay. Because when you took notes in history class, I just loved the way it flowed out of my pen. You know, oh, so. the way it flowed out of your pen. The yeah. written word again. We are, word. we are fans of the written word. We are big fans of the written word. I'm also at a similar story. But David, go ahead. You, huh? You're talking about your recipe? Uh, yeah, I was just Sorry. trying to remember how much time... I wanted okay. to put in. Well, my favorite word is extrapolate, and I have a similar story already. Yes. Uh, did your high school have something called mock trial? No, we didn't have mock trial. But I'm guessing by the name, you can guarantee, you I, pretty much I guess can what tell that was. What it is. Okay, so we, our high school had mock trial. It was something you had, like it was very kind of like um, competitive. Mm -hmm. It was a big deal to be on mock trial. So I got on it my freshman year, but 
I wasn't able to do anything. Um, I was basically just like a, a standby. Yeah. I was benched, right. My sophomore year, uh, I had applied to be like one of the defense counsel people. Yes. Okay. So I, pre I prepared, but I was like the second choice. Mm. So the main guy was like a senior. Yeah. And he got sick the day of like the state final and couldn't come. Like no. he had food poisoning or something. Oh, they were like, Jeremy, you're up. This is and everybody's worst, worst best not, dream. Worst best dream. Yeah. Tenth yeah. grade, I'm 16, I'm nervous as hell, I'm arguing in front of a, a case. I'm yeah. arguing a case in front of a judge. Yes. And at one point, someone asked me a question, and I couldn't think of an, it was a question that I wasn't prepared for or hadn't thought of or we didn't practice right. or whatever. And I said something like, I remember just, I, I said something off the top of my head, and the word extrapolate came out. I was like, well, basically, Your Honor, we can extrapolate, babe. and I just paused, and I looked back at my friend Bianca, and, like, Where did this word come and, from? She, and she goes, and we both were like, <laughs> and I was like, we can extrapolate that blah, 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 and I just kept going with it. And I was like, where did that word come from? Do I even know what that means? <laughs> anyway. We'll let you go on, David. Okay. <laughs> So we've taken the onions and the garlic and I've added all of the tomato sauce into the pot. I've put the quarter cup of basil into the pot. I um, would normally say use leaf um, oregano, but I only have ground oregano. So your ground spices are used a lot more, um, but they're finer. And so the amount that you get out of a ground spice in a tablespoon is greater than you would get if it was a leaf with a lot of like space because the it um the leaf uses more anyway it's less compact right. hey david john carley is here and i'm so hey, happy to hear that he just um, popped in and said mock trial represent john carley was on the mock trial team with me in high school and he also wants to know what color is david's hair it's blue here i'll come around the counter in a minute but what i was trying to say about the oregano is if you're using leaf oregano use a cup use um, like a quarter cup if you're using, you know, three or four tablespoons, four tablespoons is a quarter cup. If you're using ground oregano, about a third of that amount is the same volume. Do you have like an amount of time uh, that you like to keep dried what? herbs on hand before you say they're no longer good? Great question. I love the same question. I also have this question. Yeah. So I keep stuff in my, my as long pantry as forever. Yeah. As long as they are not musty and moldy or mildewy, That's what happens as they age is the oils in them um, evaporate, the essential oils that give them their particular flavor, a lot of it is in the oil, and that'll go away. The leaf itself is fine, okay. right? So what you would do is I would like sample it and see how much flavor it has and then increase it if necessary, there's no reason to throw it away. It's dehydrated. It's never going to get any drier. As long as <laughs> you, um, as long as it doesn't mold and mildew, it really it's is fine. fine. So it just means you would increase the amount if it's right. super old. Right. And that's probably how I ended up starting using a lot of spices. Actually, there's two reasons. Um, is because when I was younger and poorer, buying fresher spices all the time, becomes, you know, costly to, you know, mm -hmm. to do if you're on a low income. So buying bulk and then just using it was much more cost effective. And you can't go through a quart of oregano as a single person in a year, probably. Can't you? Well, Challenge you could. Accepted. <laughs> Challenge right? accepted, my Challenge. Right. So with that, um, that's, so the answer is no, they actually don't go bad unless they are actually bad, meaning moldy, mildewy, something wrong. Jean says uh, this show is her new favorite thing ever. Oh, yay. Okay. So now we need to add the secret ingredients to the pot. We don't have any coffee made, do we? I have not made any coffee. I'm sorry. Hmm. Well, that one's the more optional. I like my, my, my core two things are the cranberry sauce and the other, but I could make just a little bit of coffee, easy enough, in the French press. We have no coffee. Well, I can't make any coffee. I'm out of coffee. I told you this. Oh, I did not hear that. Look at that. No coffee. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. What, what, could what you do? will happen next? What will happen next, David? No coffee. Oh, I, no. Hey, babe. 
I can go downstairs and buy you some coffee. No, that's fine. I also so, have some at my place. I've got a thing of cranberry sauce. What I'm doing is I'm trying to find where my cocoa powder is. But do you want me to go downstairs and buy you some coffee? No. There's a coffee shop on the corner. Coffee that I brewed this morning at home. Yeah, and I have instant coffee. We're out, so I didn't know, know he needed this. All oh, right, sorry for the delays. I'm rummaging through my pantry. What are you going to use? Yeah, let's What's, what are you this doing? is cranberry sauce and chocolate, is what I'm going to do. Cranberry sauce and chocolate in the pasta sauce. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm going to just kind of like take the gel type because it doesn't have the um, whole berries and the berries get little spiky pointy bits. It's not as awesome when you poke your mouth when you're eating pasta sauce. That's fair. So I'm just kind of taking the gel version and I'm trying to break it up so that it will disperse into the pot better. Also, I'd like to share with you, um, one of my favorite things is jellied canned cranberry sauce. Because I it retains the mold love of the can. It because it retains the mold of the can. Now, I will say this. Uh, I know that it is awful. I know it's uncouth of me. I know. <laughs> well, it's so, um, it's so... It's redneck. But by the way, I am a redneck. <laughs> okay? I, 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 when, when the shoe fits, wear it. The shoe definitely fits. I love raspberry pan cranberry sauce and Thousand Island dressing. So there we go. I do like Thousand Island. There is, those are my secrets. So I just used a third of this. Um, it's 14 ounces, plus or minus. Anyway, I like these little silicone lids. You don't have to waste um, plastic wrap and things that will last forever in the environment. These will basically last forever. So, And then for the chocolate, What kind of chocolate is that then? This is cocoa powder. Okay. I first of all I didn't know we had cocoa powder. Yes. So we, we just have a can of cocoa powder? Well, it came in a bag and the bag was too hard to keep open and closing. The powder gets into the little Ziploc thing and then it never closes. And so I thought, why not put it into this cute little container? It is cute. I love container. a cute container. That's airtight. I love a cute container, David. Right? Thank you. And it's got a little shaker top on it, so you can, oh. you can just shake it out if you needed to. Did we get this at the container store? We did. Uh-huh. <laughs> I love the container store. It's my favorite place. Right. By the way, I used to work there. You did? When I was in college, that was my part-time job. Wow. So putting in a couple of cherry spoons. We could, we could run retail. We could, and we could organize. Organize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So now I'm going to just mix this up. The thing about a good pasta sauce, particularly a red sauce, is that it needs to sit for a long time, at least 30, 40 minutes. The longer, the better. Over just heat. on a low heat, mm -hmm. just simmering. Oh, I need to add some wine. Gene wants me to go get you some coffee, but Gene, he doesn't even drink coffee. He just wants it as an ingredient. I just want a shot. I don't want a whole bunch. Do you want me to go get you some? Yeah, yeah. It will right. take me five minutes. Would you just say so? No, it's fine. I, I think he already did his backup. All right, you've done your backup plan, so you're good, right? So Gene, just so you know, <clears throat> if you don't have coffee on hand, this is the other way you can approach this. So we've got like options for what you have in your pantry. Right. And look how industrious and you know he this, this and little space you put food is. So one of the things, one of the points for those who didn't hear earlier of the show is when you're cooking, not everything goes perfectly. Things will burn, things will you'll miss ingredients, and it's a matter of determining can I still move on or what do I do instead. In this case, the pasta sauce is still gonna be very strong and robust. And it's going to be fine. Yeah. So. And I think you've done this before, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you need more and champagne? I was about to pour some. Because I need some too. Oh, go for it. Hey, I. Yes. Ooh, here comes the sexy Angie shot. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I am the third voice. That's great. Thank you. The mm -hmm. third and most important voice. <laughs> oh. I like to think so. Well, the sauce is now. Simmering. Oh, hey, David, just so you know, Yael and John Carley say, you're looking very cute. And I have to agree, John. I do, too. You so here's my blue hair. Is it coming across the Yeah, he is. We did blue hair for him the other day. Looks cute, babe. You can definitely see. And you have your, you're actually wearing my favorite t-shirt that you have. It's your, speaking my of Japan. Japan. My Big Mac Japan t-shirt. It's hard Mac. to read now. 
So it's, it's, it's a Big Mac in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> so it says, Totokai uh, Umasa, Big Mac. Big Mac. The really large flavored Big Mac. Mm. And that is you. That is you. Have yep. you, has anyone watched McMillions? I McMillions, I have not watched it, but I really want to. It's also on my list. I have a list of, I have a list of things I need to get to. As everyone should, yes. always. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I, I live by, I live and breathe by lists. Same. And I live and breathe by crossing things off my list. Crossing things off the list is the most satisfying mm -hmm. thing ever. I will add something to it that I've already done just to cross them off. And you, I have one, one day I wrote a list of things I did yesterday <laughs> just to cross them off. Because also sometimes people jump in and supersede your list yeah. and make you feel unproductive and yeah. you need to be reminded that you were productive. Exactly. You were just choosing somebody else's adventure that day. Yeah. I love a choose your adventure. Same. Did you know how it, And the written word. And I love the written word. I love a choose your adventure. Did you know when I was little, I used to read choose your adventures and that when you come to the end of the story, I would like make post-it note outlines of like Okay, I stopped here, and then rewind and make the other choice and then go yeah. back. I would, then I would rewind back and make the other choice and go all the way through that choice. So I, then I would read great. every possible outcome of all the different right. areas. I would love to see that. But I would like to know an ending. Yeah. When you ended up in five different storylines, it all went to the same ending. It was so I, annoying. How lazy is that? I love those books, though. You know oh, no, they were great. great. I loved the Hardy Boys when I was little. I loved that stuff. I read those books constantly. Yeah, they were so good. But back to the Choose Your Own Adventure, Black Mirror, uh -huh. the TV show, has a Choose Your Own Adventure episode. Uh, yes, that was their last season I, opener. Yeah, yeah, I did see that. And may I just say, I love the idea. I don't think it was executed very well. Me neither. Yeah. But I think it was very good. It was a great idea, and I want that stuff to continue. But yeah, let's keep that, it going. Yeah, that, like, was, they, that was a good intro. I but we can amp it up. For Please example, let's make a show. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, we have cameras and lights. <laughs> Is blown. Well, I mean, all right. We're so, quarantined for a month. I've got, we've got plans now. Oh, oh, we've got options. By the way, our spaghetti squash. Chicken. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna just turn the oven off and let it sit for a minute. It's not gonna overcook and get mushy. It's going to be fine for a few more minutes. So, just putting on the water because it takes a while for a pot of water to boil. Gonna put in a couple really good tablespoons of salt. Because pasta without salt has no flavor. Oh, we've got some comments coming in. Uh, did you introduce your... Okay, so hold on. Uh, John says your hair looks great, and did you introduce your special friend? John, uh, we did earlier, but Angie, come on, come in front of the camera. Let's have a little, let's have a little intro. Little intro intro sesh. Well, hold on, wait, David, wait. Go wait. ahead, go ahead. Okay. Is this a good time for intro? John Carley and the rest of our online fam, I'd like you to meet... Our friend Angie, who is our neighbor, she lives about three blocks away. Angie, take it away. I have met, I've known Jeremy for several years. Three years, Jerry, yeah. And I moved recently within a walk, a few block walking distance from Jeremy and David, and then quarantine hit, and we've never been able to hang out, which is a shame. <laughs> and so last Friday, Jeremy and I decided Fuck We're going to hang out. Yeah. And uh, we saw each other across the street. And, and ran. And ran and hugged before we realized that we shouldn't. And then we, it felt so good. It did. It just felt good. And then I was like, well, David's faithful. Now, now, now let me not let me back in the house. Right. Because I'm He had to contaminated. be de-loused. I had to be de-loused because I touched another human. And so last night we were talking about the cooking show and decided. Fuck it. Right. We're just going to do it because I have also been nowhere. Yeah. They've been nowhere. We've been nowhere. You've been nowhere. We've got no viruses. I don't think it, we could not be safer. We couldn't be. Yeah. It, unless we were wrapped in condoms. Which, you, you know, the day is young. 99.9%. 99.9%. Right. So, Just like a Clorox wipe. It's thanks to me, everyone. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Can you flip that back around? Yes, baby. All right. So I put the pot of water on. I just pushed the pasta sauce to the smaller back burner to keep it simmering. So the flavors will melt. We need to prepare the chicken. And we need to deal with the spaghetti squash. Uh, David. Yes. Uh, hold on. Got some questions here. Oh, John just is asking, when do we see Jeremy? Jerry's saying hello to Angie. Your sister says, 
She still doesn't let even the family in her house. She what? She doesn't let anybody into her house still. Yeah. And then uh, your dad says nice cameo. John says circle of trust. And B James ninety nine says hello from Skyway. Hello, O'Brien. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna just roughly chop up this chicken that I have. moments in the sauce would be adding to it. Okay. Butcher, we have the butcher at Plant Market where I buy everything. I'm using a different keyboard, a keyboard. I'm using a different chopping block um, than where I had the vegetables going so that we don't end up accidentally cross-contaminating if I um, Decide to cut something fresh again. Ew, chicken. Ew. I'm gonna rinse my hand off even though I'm going to be touching it again. Well, on the recipes, if you look, this is called mayo chicken. And the reason I do that is the mayonnaise, um, if you've ever cooked chicken that's been chopped into chunks and you fry it, a lot of times it gets very, very dry and not very palatable. And I was looking for a way to help seal in the moisture on the chicken. And I found that if I mix the marinade or the sauce in mayonnaise and then put, the, put it on the chicken, it distributes well, it sticks to the chicken when I cook it, the mayonnaise will actually break down into its component oil, which is 99% of what mayonnaise is. And then it will um, provide the oil necessary to fry the chicken. And so it's a win-win. And the chicken comes out, not dry, still tender on the inside, and it's great. All right. So David, your brother-in-law, John Tremendous here. Hey, John. And then Jerry says, ew, mayo. Mayo. She, and I'm assuming she meant that in the ew, David. Right. Ew. Well, we know that she's not a fan of mayonnaise. She she's hates, not a fan no, of Jerry hates, hates white mayonnaise. Condiments. She, waits, she hates white condiments. Right. Yeah. Like, she doesn't like a ranch dressing. Yeah, it's amazing that's, she got That's pregnant. unfortunate. <laughs> so what'd you say? It's amazing she got pregnant. <laughs> oh, my. But we aren't eating the mayonnaise like as a condiment. It's actually for the oil in the mayonnaise. Whereas if you just used oil to do this, the oil would run off and pool at the bottom of the pot or the mixing bowl, and it wouldn't um, adhere in the same way to the chicken. Hey, baby, we've got an active debate here in your chat. Okay. People are arguing over whether they like or dislike mayonnaise. Jerry, as we know, is a very big advocate of yeah. anti and no mayonnaise ever. Your sister saying she loves it. Mm -hmm. I, I really like it. But Ooh, yeah. and coming in for the win is David. Yes. What was Tie that? Tiebreaker. Tiebreaker. Tie but what I don't like is salad dressing that looks like mayonnaise, also known as Miracle Whip. Ew. Ew. <laughs> hey, baby, um, what's that? Mayonnaise that uh, the Japanese mayonnaise I like so much. Kewpie. And, and that, what's the special? What's so special about that? It's got like a lemon tang to it, right? Right. They use lemon instead of vinegar as the um, preservative base. I also am not a huge fan of mayonnaise, but the Japanese mayonnaise that style I, I actually love. Yeah. Have you made your own mayonnaise? Before? I have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any special? The main thing to if you're going to make mayonnaise yourself, if you have a recipe is you take the base ingredients that you're going to be starting your mayonnaise with, your egg yolks mm -hmm. and your um, mustard. Usually there's a bit of mustard that helps be an emulsifier in your mayonnaise to help you get started. Ooh, that's some champagne, babe. You whisk those together for a couple minutes before you add your oil. And if you do that, then your mayonnaise tends to work out a lot better mm -hmm. than if you just put it all in the bowl and just start with the components. Mm -hmm. Pre-emulsify your, um, your mustard and your egg yolk. I am a big fan of mayonnaise. David, David also loves mayonnaise. I mean, really, béarnaise sauce and 
Um, I love a hollandaise sauce. Hollandaise, hollandaise. mayonnaise, they're all basically sauce. the same thing. Right. I do love hollandaise sauce, but also I think it's because I love eggs benedict. I just love the whole, just, love just the whole yeah. combination. Right? It's so good. It's my favorite breakfast. Unless the English muffin is overcooked and it scrapes the skin off the roof of your mouth. Could not agree more. Yeah. And eggs benedict is hard to get right, but when you get it right, you it's really, so it's perfect. so good. Yeah. Just chopping the chicken into about one inch chunks. How many pounds of chicken did you use? I got four okay. breasts, or I asked for four, but apparently there were five in the pack, so I just bonus. went with it. Bonus. Bonus breasts. Bonus breasts. Bonus breasts. breasts. I, totally I love a bonus breast. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Jerry says it's the Indiana State food. What? Mayonnaise. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> She's messing with Angie. Oh, and Angie Jerry. almost um, spit um, champagne yeah, up her nose. Just so you know, Jerry, uh, you, you can't see her on camera, but when you said that, or I read it aloud, and you just so left. Champagne. Almost tiny little blueberries. Tiny yeah. blueberries shooting out of my nose. <laughs> tiny blueberries. Tiny blueberries shooting out my nose. Oh, I love that song. I love that song. It's a great it's song. It's so good. It's, it won a Grammy. Yeah. It did? Let's put it on. Tiny Bubbles did? On the album. Oh, it's, it's on my playlist. Yeah. Wake and Spake. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, David, your dad says, I don't eat real or craft mayo or any other popular brand because the main ingredient is soy oil. Oh. I would uh, pay extra for avocado mayo. I couldn't agree more. Right. Fascinating. Not fermented soy, particularly. Um, it has a lot of estrogens in it and other things that can make it uh, less, less awesome. Okay. They're over here making like sign language and fiddling fingers. We're just so. having behind the scenes chats, David. Oh, You're on camera. Keep it up. I was actually curious why David's mom and dad are watching separately. They're not. I don't know. Yes, yeah, you are. are they no, they're both. Well, so they're like watching it on TV and then they chat off their oh, phones. Yeah, she, nice. she just asked me, are David's parents still together? Why are they? They are. Didn't want to be inappropriate. She didn't want to ask. She didn't want to ask out loud. Yes. Right? But yes, his parents are still together. They're like the model family. It's That's disgusting. what I thought. It's yeah. like the, the really great relationship. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and everyone knows during quarantine, all relationships have had a challenge. During quarantine, relationships are not only the central part of our life, which, by the way, I have to say, they always should be. They should be, yeah. But also, it's super challenging. It is, Because yeah. we can't see each other, we can't be together in meaningful ways. Right. Um, and that's not fun. And then you have one person that's there all the time, mm -hmm. and... I would well, his name is Jeremy, and David wants to kill him. <laughs> but he's still alive, everyone. But he's still alive. All right, we I'm forgot. I'm just a prop. I was going to say, <laughs> the other thing about the um, pasta sauce is chili peppers, mm. or the, pop, the these are chili de arbol. I'm going to just put like four or five of them in while it's simmering. If you, it gives it a little bit of heat, but it's not going to be overpowering. It's not going to actually be hot and spicy. What, what kind of peppers are these? Yeah. These are chili de arbol. They're like Thai chilies. Say it again These are bit. chili de arbol. A R B O L. Okay. They're a standard. If you go to like a Mexican section in your grocery store, if you get little red dried chilies, that's what they are. And they work great. They can stand in the place of like Thai chilies okay. or similar type of chili. Um, they have very little flavor and a decent amount of heat. And I leave them whole so that if you get one, you can just pull it out and set it aside. Okay. He uses these all the time. Really? Yeah, he does. This is great. He loves these, he loves these peppers. Luke doesn't like or spicy food, but I love spicy food. You know what's interesting is that I, David and I were talking about this just this morning before you came over, that I have noticed my tastes have changed dramatically from like, I don't know, 10 years ago yeah. or 20 years ago for sure. I used to hate lemons. Now I love lemons. I want them in everything. Yeah. I used to hate spicy foods, now I want, I can't have something spicy enough. I think that our taste buds adapt. Die. 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 <laughs> right, yeah. We'll call it a death. Let's we call it die. get numb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely killed mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to add a good cup or so of red wine into the sauce. I'm going to add it now so that the bitter, the alcohol part of it will largely boil out over time and it won't be bitter. Do you have a kind of wine that you prefer? Um, this is actually an Italian red cooking wine, but 
Um, anything not too sweet would be great. Jerry agrees, like she says, her taste buds have changed as well, and she likes cilantro now, for example, when she used to not. But David, you hate cilantro, and mm -hmm. I love it. Well, some people don't like it, and some people have right. that. And what I was smelling the wine bottle for is to make sure that it hadn't turned to vinegar. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, yeah, David has that thing where it, where it, it, tastes, like you, it tastes like soap to you. Yeah. Mm. Jerry, maybe someday you'll like mayonnaise. Jerry. There's still time for you. <laughs> It's not too late. <laughs> we can bring you over to the dark side. Yeah. To the craft side. Maybe some cream cheese, dare I say. Oh, you know what? I do like cream cheese. Oh, smear it on there. I wish I didn't, but I love it. Smear it on there. Smear it. Smear it. <laughs> There's nothing better than like a lox bagel with some cream cheese on it and lots of capers and onions. Oh, oh. gosh. And Tell me right now. Northwest is so perfect. Oh my that. gosh! That, have you ever been to that plate, that bagel place on Capitol Hill, Westward? Oh no. Oh, we'll we'll, we'll go there next well, time we socially distance. Well, oh, that's right when they open. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Life has stopped. We may get it delivered instead. Um, before babies, Jerry says she also thought cilantro tasted like soap, but it's changed since she's had children. Isn't that huh. interesting? Huh. Well, that changes when we have children. Okay. So I just tasted my sauce. What After it's had some time. What Tastes sure? really good, but it needs a little more salt. Mm -hmm. um, so, gonna just add it, add it slowly as your sauce simmers. Because when you add the salt, the salt's a mineral, it's a crystal. It has to melt into the food before you actually taste the difference that the salt is going to bring. So I'm gonna just add another good pinch of salt, mix it up, and then just let it be for a while. Babe, people often say things like a pinch or a dash. Like, right. now this is a pretty rudimentary question, but like you really do just mean you just grab your fingers and then just throw right. It. A pinch. I usually for a small pinch, it's two fingers. For a big pinch, I use the three fingers like this, and you get that much salt. Would that be a dash then? Is that a dash or a pinch? A dash is actually um, if you've got like a shaker, uh -huh. you dash. Dash. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So, I mean, these are just loose, vague terms that really don't mean anything. It's right. just, I'm just asking because I'm very, I'm, um, wow, that was a, that's as all we all know, I'm, I'm, un, I'm, I'm, right. I'm, I'm like, so a, a dash would kitchen. be like this amount. Okay. So a dash is maybe about a quarter of a teaspoon ish. But a pinch is less than a teaspoon. Okay, so. I've salted the chicken. Now I need to add the other ingredients. Mayonnaise, paprika, garlic powder, some savory or thyme. What are you tapping about over there? We're just we're just behind yeah, the scenes. -ing. We're just behind the scenes. -ing. Mm -hmm. All right. So first, <coughs> drinks are incredible. To uh, Jerry's um, enjoyment. Where to go? Oh, this. I'm just putting the mayonnaise right over the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, this one's for you. Oh god, that's actually vile. Just kidding. <laughs> that was for Jerry. That was for Jerry. That was for Jerry. Alright, I'm using savory and thyme because I happen to have both. Alright. And then gonna use some garlic powder and some paprika and black pepper. Maybe you, you use uh, paprika and quite a lot as well. I do. Yeah. Particularly on chicken. Oh. What do you think that is? And do you use smoked paprika? Or no, I paprika? don't use smoked for most things because it provides a lot of smoky flavor. Mm -hmm. And I find that that really overwhelms a lot of food and it's not appropriate for a lot of food. Okay. So there is a sweet paprika and a hot paprika. And I tend to use the sweet. There it is. All those spices, I everyone. Mean, yeah, those are all his spices from that farmer's market in Atlanta that he loves. We, when we go home, he like goes and socks up. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever heard of Penzi's? No. Penzi's is a spice company, and I only know of it because I went to the store in upstate New York when I was working there. Uh huh. But similarly, you just walk in and they have spices everywhere. You can choose. Yeah. I love places like that. Imagine what, what Roman's like before they got the spices. Imagine. Really bland. 
imagine what Rome was like before the spice trade, right? Mm -hmm. Just a bunch of bland white people. Yeah. Much like in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Similar to here, but, but without paprika. <laughs> without paprika. <laughs> Hungarian and Spanish paprika. <laughs> All right, so just using the mayonnaise to mix through and to make sure that the spice is kind of evenly coat everything. See, Jerry, you can't even tell me. Actually, David, Jerry has had this before, and she loved it, and she didn't know that mayonnaise was part of your ingredient, so I think maybe... Um, just never tell Just Jerry. never tell her again. No, she knows that. She says don't tell her. She also wants to know what our thoughts are on the Spice Girls. Jerry, that's a whole other encyclopedia. Spice right? up your life, Jerry. Spice up your life, indeed. <laughs> I mean, tell you what I, want, what I really, really want. I don't know about you. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really Is want. Is it Zika <laughs> That's my favorite spice. <laughs> Zig -zig 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 <laughs> spice up your life. Hey, uh, David, Carrie Lamb is back and she said, hey, Carrie. did David just put mayo on that chicken? I oh, did. Hey, Carrie, you've missed a whole conversation. You have. Scroll through the comments. Scroll right. through, babe. And by the way, I'll just call you later and tell you all about it. But yes, there is mayo in the kitchen. So I uh, use mayo because mayo is, an, is actually basically an oil that's been emulsified. And I use it as a way to coat the chicken and to keep the coating and the spice on the chicken chunks that I've cut up. I love her. Jerry, are you cracking me All right, I'm just waiting for the pan to get hot. Well, so in the meantime, if, so do you have a little bit of time? Why? Because I was thinking this is the great time for lemon drop shots. Oh, we could do that and then I'll deal with the, what you call it? Spaghetti squash. That's that's spaghetti squash. Lemon drop shots. Lemon, lemon drop, drop shots. shots. Lemon, lemon drop, drop shots. Lemon drop shots. <laughs> so today we're getting, we have Meyer lemons. So I'm going to use one of those. Ooh, Where's the so shaker? Thick. So they. So oh, I'll get the shaker for you, babe. But so last week David went to the market and came home with uh, w uh, these beautiful Meyer lemons. I, but he buys lemons for me all the time because I drink lemon water every morning. Oh, I love that's it. Good for you. Love it. Love yeah, it. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and so he, um, it's like, I have to have it every morning. So he brought me these beautiful, beautiful Meyer lemons. They're so gorgeous and they're just bursting with flavor. So last week we made lemon drop shots mm. with them. And so he bought some more and here we go. You and will be- drop shots with vodka, sugar, lemon juice with sugar in. And that's it. Yep. That's it. Simple, that's classic. It. Yeah. it seems a little basic, yeah. but hello, fits you fits. I'm mm -hmm. the most basic person of all of us. Right. He said nobody ever. <laughs> um, funny story from New Orleans. Right. One of my favorite cities. My, also one of my ever. favorite cities. And a good story always comes from New Orleans. Always. So I was uh, there for work, incidentally. And of course, I was taking full advantage. Absolutely. Tattoo while I was there, when I was there. You know, so, but this pre tattoo, pre, like, like, we're just kicking off the trip. So I go out to dinner close to my hotel, of course, in um, the quarter. And I am sitting up at the bar, making friends with the bartender. Nice. And they have one at Chilo. Oh. That is like their favorite thing. But the story has nothing to do Can't with the There was a very drunk boy. And I say boy because he was very young. He stumbles in from the dining area, saddles up to the bar, tries to hit on one of the beautiful bartenders. <laughs> so there was a male beautiful bartender and a female okay. beautiful bartender. He's hitting on the female beautiful bartender. Yeah. The male is the one that I was talking to the most. Everyone's rolling their eyes and ignoring him. But he thinks he's so suave that he says some one liner leans back casually in his bar stool. But the bar stool has no back. Did he fall over? He fell right off the bar stool. That's the best thing I've ever Hit heard. the ground. Right. And then he pops up and says he's going to sue everyone because who doesn't put backs on their bar stool? God, I love America. <laughs> I love our lit 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 litigious nature. <laughs> litigious nature. So you couldn't find the chicken? you. What did you say, baby? You didn't find the chicken. Oh, I'm going to get it for you. Oh, okay. Got it. I'm on. I I'm distracted on. him. I got distracted with he hearing about people falling over in your homes. Yeah, it was really good. Babe, where is the shaker? Because it usually is in that cabinet over there and it's not. Just, well, hey, remember? We'll you, just work around. You want to improvise and show yeah. improvise? So, how do you improvise if you don't have a shaker? <laughs> well, let's, let's find out. We do have a I shaker, though. I just don't know what happened to it. Did you guys make all of those mugs up there on the top shelf? Did we make all those them? mugs? Yeah, they Thank you for asking me. about those mugs. Actually, Angie, I'm not sure if you know, it's about me going to live in Japan. <laughs> Shocking! <laughs> the <laughs> ultimate reason. 
can do the, the, ultimate, the, the ultimate secret. There it is. Behind the scenes. David and Jeremy lived in Japan. All right. It might splash around a bit, but it'll work. Okay. Hey, David, show everybody what the, what the uh, that coffee right. mug is. What? Oh, what's, what's on that coffee mug? Oh, it's, Jeremy's it's Hillary mug. It's all You've the turned the camera away from me, baby. Oh. oh, sorry. Well, just so you know, she should be our president. Right. Anyhow. So, a Meyer lemon is actually a mix, it's a citron and a tangerine that have been crossbred. They look like lemons. They taste a little like lemons, but with a hint of tangerine flavor. They're less acidic, less sour. They're very juicy. They are very, very yeah. juicy, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. they really are. Honestly, they are. Babe, I don't know where that shaker went. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's just D on it. You made cocktails lately? What do you say? We made, we did make cocktails actually. I checked in the dishwasher and some. Yeah, I made some yesterday. I don't know where yeah. I put it though. I thought I saw it this morning, but I thought so too, David. Anyway, the room. Oh, here it is. I found it. Handy. I'm sorry. It's just the light. It was so it was hidden. Yeah. Right. There we go. It just keep me from splashing things around. Does everybody else drink while they cook? I'm curious. What was that? Done I'm curious if the audience. Great question. Oh, we usually have a drinking game going, but we forgot today. Shall we start? Yes, let's start. Sure. Right yeah. So, so you guys know? decide on what I say or don't say, and I do it. Acidic. You know. But then, but or you have acid. to just type it in the chat and then announce it after it happens. So I don't know. Otherwise, I'll be paranoid. But so you guys just like words he says all the time, like darn oh, and okay. actually. So last week it was you actually, every time yeah. he said actually we drank. And darn is really cute. And darn is a cute one. Yeah. It's, it's a cute spigism. It is, yeah. So, so we're going to have like, some, yeah. some shots in these little crystal glasses. Oh, skull. Skull. Oh, that's shocking. Was it, so David, you and I were talking before the show kicked off about yes. uh, names that you had thrown around for your cooking show right. eventually, was it one of the ideas, something that had a, a skull. of a skull? Right, so I've got a really cool ring with a skull and crossbones on it, except the crossbones are actually a fork and a spatula. Yeah. And I love it, and I love the idea, except I didn't want to relate the show with poison. Mm. I didn't think maybe that was the best idea, so changed the mind on that one. I want more women. We have more lemons. I'm gonna just mix a real lemon and my lemon. Nice glasses. Thanks, babe. Mm -hmm. Jerry's looking fly. Hey, John. <laughs> Why just John? Because he said when we could see oh. Jerry. Uh, oh. Oh, so. Person? Oh yeah. So David, your sister says mm -hmm. the drinking of the word word of the day should be so so. By the way, David says that a lot, but also so do I. I say so all the time. I'm like so. Blah, blah, blah. So, uh, so it's like a verbal tick I have. Yeah. I'm, yeah, it's nice. So it'll yeah. have to be small sips if the word is so. <laughs> so. So. David, would you say that's like a? That's a filler word. Yeah. Do you find that you cringe when somebody points out your filler words? No, it doesn't bother me. Not at all. No. And you do a lot of public speaking. I do a lot of public speaking. It doesn't bother me at all. Okay. I, I know sometimes I'm good and I'm in bad. What qualifies as bad? So in my experience, uh, when you're just kind of like not prepared or not, in the, you're not ready or you're not yeah. like well rested enough or you haven't thought about it enough, um, but a lot of the stuff I have to do for work is oftentimes repetitive. So like I'll just do one thing and I'll get it ready and I'll do the same thing to like 20 clients. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of become second nature. Okay. And so but, but when, so when, when the beginning though, it's hard for me to kind of, maybe it's hard to kind of figure out what is I'm trying to say, what is the point I'm trying to get across. So, and how does the audience perceive it? Because each audience has its own. Well, level. chemistry matters. Mm -hmm. Like, so if some, the person next to you could be the hottest person in the world, but if they're stupid, who cares? Oh, yeah. It has to be, okay. chemistry, chemistry is incredible. So sometimes you have to have chemistry with people like, you know, like for my, for example, if I do public speaking um, and you can tell the audience is engaged, you can feel it, you can tell. You can feel you it. You can feel it, you can tell. Yeah, I completely agree. All right, so. Hmm. 
What? Jerry's, Jerry says that my word is multiple because I say it just like that. Multiple. It's usually like I'm emphasizing something. So like that's happened multiple times. Okay. Where, I've never noticed that about you. You have to get me kind of pissed off. Okay. Yeah. David said, David and actually his entire family say a word that is so strange to me, the way they pronounce it. David, what is that word? Hold on, hold on. Actually, let's test this. Angie. Type it into the Angie. thing and have Angie say it. Okay, I'm Angie, I'm going to type this word in, okay. and I want you to say it aloud, okay? okay. Measure. Oops, sorry, hold on. Wait, oh, crap. Measure. Measure. Right? Measure. David, would you please say that word? Measure. No, he major. says major, like the month of May, yeah. major. So Jeremy used to really scream and try to correct me about this. <laughs> scream, because <laughs> that's his version of it. It's not the right way to scream. And then I looked it up on dictionary.com, and you know they have like the pronunciation of words? Yeah. It says major, or Measure. measure. No, it said measure, measure or, or measure. measure. Oh, it did say second. that. It was yeah. the second pronunciation. He's trying to make it the first one. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I recorded right. dictionary.com dictionary saying Let's, major, and it was my ringtone for him for like a year. Oh, that's Let's chop, right. and then I can get back to cooking, and we can that's get good. this going. Perfect. Mm. Cheers. Happy Saturday, everyone. Happy Saturday. Happy yeah. Saturday. Thank you for Thanks, Cheers. I have to keep cooking and keep my mind about me, so I'll have half now and half later. Okay. All right. Well, and yeah, I'll have another in about an hour. Okay. Sounds okay. good. Bye. Bye. Okay. I'm glad I live so close. <laughs> also, I'm so glad that you live so close. I'll walk you home later. <laughs> have you seen this road? Oh, I have seen this street. It is. Well, when I called you, it's because I texted you. Are we living in, oh, I feel like we're living in Thunderdome. Yes. I said it, it's the methamphetamine zombie apocalypse. Oh, yeah. Out, out in front of our houses. Yeah. Um, they're we're... shouting. I had somebody who was clearly drugged up. I don't mean this is in a very judgmental tone, but it's just a pink picture. Very drugged up. Wearing half of his clothes with the left hand. Oh, last weekend, well, David. Was it was, like, was, was <laughs> David? Was it Monday? We went. Uh, we took David took Monday off from work, and so did I. And we both we just got in the car and drove for like ten hours. Yeah. Um, from all around the Olympic Peninsula. I don't know why, but I always think a Buick. <laughs> a Buick? Yes, like an old man's oh, car. Oh, saver. Yes, like a big. I'm not really sure how to take that. I'm not sure because. Every you think you I should drive a Buick? Every time you talk about your car and bring me out of the garage, I picture... Me coming out in a Buick. Yes, but it's not. It's a beautifully maintained Buick, so I can't tell where my mind is going with no, no, no. it. I love this. Let's unpack this. <laughs> so your it. mental image of me bringing my car out of the garage is an old school Buick. Yep. So first of all, I think this is maybe an insult tinged with a compliment. Right. Yeah. Well, that's what I think. Which but is also, by the way... No, no, but, but, like, but by the way, no, but that's, yeah. that, I respond very well to insults and compliments. <laughs> or is it a compliment tinged with an insult? No, it's definitely an insult tinged with a compliment. It's definitely, a Buick is definitely an insult tinged with a compliment. Yeah. It's not a great thing. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're sorry. Got the chicken frying. <laughs> we're in trouble. We'll pipe down. We'll pipe down. Have the chicken cooking. Um, let's prep the things for the white sauce. The water is still not boiling. It's annoying. Oh, actually, I was going to do the spaghetti sauce. Jerry, by the way, my dad would love to say, so Jerry's comment was, Jake's is Royan oh. for ruin, R-U-I-N. My dad um, also would say Royan. Oh, interesting. You say what? Rowan instead of ruin. 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 Ru Ryan? Ryan. Yeah. He would say window as oh, well. Oh, yeah. And uh, for toilet, he'd say toilet. Okay, so I, that's also... My look says the same. Okay, yeah, because I think um, when 
I did that Ancestry.com bit, we went back to like Tennessee. Okay. So oh. I think we must have very similar roots. Well, we're probably related. Which is what weird. It's I mean, so good with alcohol. That's everyone in Tennessee <laughs> is related. And uh, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> cheers. Hey, cuz. Hey, cuz. <laughs> There's like five last names. Yeah. Brian. All right, Brian. so we're just letting the spaghetti squash cool so that we can take it apart. You can see, well, you can't really right now, but there's the, the fibers in a spaghetti squash grow around this way. So it'll make spaghetti type noodles. The fibers will, when you take them out, that are as long as your squash is as big. So if you want longer noodles, you need a bigger squash. Yeah. It looks good. It does look good. And nicely just, browned. Yeah. Yeah. Just need to let it cool down enough to where I can handle it without burning my hands. Yeah. All right. We'll do white sauce prep. Mm, more garlic. Can you move your right? oven mitt? Thank you. Let's see. Make sure the oven is off. Yeah, let's come around. Do you right. prefer to cook with cast iron and in what situation? I prefer to use cast iron in non-acidic cooking situations. What about eggs and bacon? Yes. Yes. What about... If um, you make scrambled eggs, no. Okay. Because the um, yolks on the egg actually um, bond to the oil and it can strip the seasoning off of your pan. Ooh. That's how, that's how mayonnaise works, right? Is uh, the yolk all roads lead suspending... Back to the oil and the emulsion, but it's because the yolks will, uh, um, yeah, emulsion. Anyway, they just it bonds with. I'm sorry. D so David is continuing great conversation while Jeremy and I giggle hysterically, mm -hmm. not because of what he's saying, but because we these are such great answers. I have been cooking. What am I? Thirty-five. Are you thirty-five? I don't remember. You look ten. How? What year is it? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm thirty-five. I'm forty-three. <clears throat> You don't look 43. Thank you. Say it again. Again. You don't look 43. But these are answers nobody has given me in my All right. entire life of cooking. Yeah, so this is fantastic. So if you're going to make scallops, you want a stainless steel pan, not a non-stick. And preferably not um, iron. Um, it just helps the crust on the scallop. You put your oil in, your fat, and you place the scallops, and then you do not move them until they come off. Okay. Right? They have to release. Kind They'll of release oil. themselves when they're ready to be floated. So do you like scallops? So Not at all. I didn't, yeah, no, so he why didn't. do you know how to cook them? He cooks um, things for me. I, oh. Right, I cook things for Jeremy and I want to know how to make things for people that they like, not just things that I like. I have a recipe I'd like you to master. Okay. That may include scallops. Oh. Well, you know, that's part of the show and what we want to do going forward is um, I want people to send in recipes that either they don't know how to make or they ha can't make successfully or they're afraid of. Right. And I'm going to give them a shot with never having a practice. I'll have read the recipe, I'll buy the ingredients, and I'll oh. give it a go. Great idea, David. Angie has a great recipe, and your sister said that was a great tip, by the way. Yeah. Um, I, I think we should try to master fried chicken. <gasps> I am good at fried chicken. I bet chicken. you so are say this. And getting the sticking to gonna, hold on that chicken is clutch, right? right? It's so hard. And do you use the buttermilk bath or not? Could I not think agree we should more. dig into that. Agreed. I love a buttermilk, um, essentially brined piece yeah. of chicken. Mm. I'm right. just mincing this garlic and then I'm going to smash it. If you've got a garlic press, you can do that instead if you like. Or if you buy the puree, you can buy tubes of garlic already done. That'll work. Meanwhile, while David cooks, Belle is over here, sound asleep, ears tossed back. Oh, I'm sorry. She moved, but her third eye was were so completely closed. This is the sp most spoiled dog on uh, this entire planet. I think in my next life I'm coming back as a dog that's well loved. Not like a, a Moroccan dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not a food dog. Like a Chinese dog. I, like, I don't mind coming back as Belle, like, quite frankly. Yeah, no, yeah. she looks like she's doing pretty well. Oh, Belle's well, well taken care of. Yeah, she is. All right. I need to mix the chicken. Oh, so that it gets all around. Uh, Pickle juice. Hey, David. Yes. 
You've got some pressed yes for scallops and pickle juice, Jerry says. Pickle juice for a marinade for chicken works. Yeah, I agree. That's the, that's the Chick-fil-A ingredient now. That's their secret really? sauce. They, they Stop it. How do you know that secret too? They marinate their chicken in pickle juice. Because the employees who work there the employees who talk work about it. hate uh, them because they are very anti-gay. They are. It's like and the awful. Yeah. They're, yeah. So, by the way, we know some people in Atlanta who basically got their recipe and started to do it. It was to a lesbian couple. Uh, they had their own yeah. place called Urban Cannibals. And they were yes. like, we're open on Sundays serving Chick-fil-A. <laughs> or chicken sandwiches. They didn't say Chick-fil-A, but we well know. Well done. Well done to well them, done. exactly. Because Chick-fil-A, they made a choice. They made it. Chick-fil-A yeah, made, 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 made an active choice to be anti-gay. But let's also give honor to people who make choices that jive with their beliefs, even though we don't agree with their beliefs. No, that's a bad belief. No. Well, you're saying it's a bad belief, but everybody well, has if, a belief. Well, yes, you know I mean? believe in integrity, but your belief still needs to be scientifically valid. I agree with that. A belief does not have the same weight as a fact-based opinion. I agree. Yep. Those are entirely different things, and they're not of the same character. I agree. I do agree. Well, you may be a know-it-all. Hey, look at you. David, wait, hold on. David Spake being a know-it-all? I'm surprised. It's so good. <laughs> I will listen to David Spake all day long. This is why I want to meet Mama David Spake. Uh, yeah, Mama David Spake is pretty great. Yeah. Mama Wani. Mama Wani. All right, I'm going to uh, mash the garlic with the edge of the knife, so I'm adding just a tad bit of oil so that it doesn't um, jump up off when, when you drag the pressure of the knife oh, across. It can like jump yeah. like tiddly winks a little bit, and so I'm using the oil to make it stick better to the Everybody chopping board. Everybody on the show should take a drink because David said tiddly wink, and even though that's not our drinking game, everyone should always drink for tiddly wink. I agree, tiddly winks indeed. Tiddly yes. winks all around. To Cheers tiddly to tiddly winks. Woo! David, your sister says she wants to try some pickle juice chicken. Lol. Yeah. Yeah, she did. Basically, you just put it in a marinade, put the pickle juice in like some type of container with its plastic bag or Tupperware or whatever you have, and pour the pickle juice in your brining solution over it, whatever you like, garlic or whatever. No. And then come back a few hours later, rinse it off, okay. because you don't want the sour necessarily in the batter of your chicken. You just want it to have done its magic to the meat. So it's what's happening scientifically when salt is breaking down the Salt protein. and the acid. There we go. Yes. Your sister says she's going to do it. Yeah. So she's going to oh, give, give it a try. Send pictures. Send pictures, Sean? Deanna. Yeah. This is Deanna. Her name yeah. is Deanna. Deanna. So he, David has two sisters. Okay. Sean is his older sister and Deanna is his younger sister. Okay. And he also has an older brother named Roddy. Okay. So he's got the, it's a four sibling situation. And who's Varnished Huns? I feel like this is the first time Varnished Huns has said this. Varnished Huns said yes to scallops, and I feel like I know who Varnished Huns is. But we need more information. I need more information. Please introduce yourself. Varnished Huns, first of all, great name. It's great name. Yeah. Right. I, right. would, I would listen to that band. I'd buy that band. Varnished Huns is going on tour this summer. No way. At Front Row Seats. Oh. <laughs> I'll take right it. Right here. Yeah. So, while we were talking about the mayonnaise, I didn't put in enough to really cook the chicken. So I'm going to put a tad bit of oil in here to keep it from... Um, and your oil of choice right now is olive. Go Grape Grapeseed. Grape seed. Grape seed. I use grapeseed most of the time. <coughs> what happened to your voice? I use grapeseed most of the time <laughs> or... <coughs> they just went through puberty before eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and Avocado have... oil. What it is, it's a oil that has a high smoke point, which means it can get really hot before the oil itself starts to burn. Okay. Olive oil has it actually a quite low yeah. smoke point, and it's really easy to burn the oil and have a little bit of a, kind of a rancidy edge on it. You know, I did this last weekend, so I made French toast. Well, no, that's not true because I use butter, but I made French toast in my cast iron. Yes. And it Angie, kind of, that sounds great. It was really good. It was sourdough and with an obvious end bath, the cinnamon, blah, blah, blah. But um, it picked up the flavor of my cast iron. Right. In a bad have, way. David loves French toast. It's his favorite breakfast food. The you, texture was really good. The flavor was awesome. Really? You made, yes. That's weird. When you make yourself French toast, do you use your cast iron? I've used cast iron. I use, I've used basically all the cans that I have at various times. Um, so maybe we should add this to the list, too. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever made a full custard 
French toast. No. Maybe we should have a brunch day sometime. I was just thinking that, David. Day. A brunch yes. day would be great. Day. So I think we've got the four next weeks already scheduled. Okay. But maybe in the fifth week we can oh, we'll yeah. do brunch. I think mean, brunch is a great idea. I mean, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> we could make like biscuits and gravy, and we can make French oh. toast. So hold on. And I have to say this, and I, I'm really, really serious. I'm a big biscuits and gravy snob. Because I am from the South. Well, that the is gravy where it's, is very the gravy the is very important. Oh, very the biscuit's important. I will say this. David Spake's gravy is the best gravy I have ever had. And of course, it's pork gravy. It is and it's white. 100%. Yes. Right. You can't, I, I don't like gravy unless it's biscuits and gravy. Oh, me too. Me too. I don't like, I don't want, don't put gravy on. Well, oh, or chicken bread steak. I will put or gravy. mashed potatoes. So hold on, we like gravy I, and I love, like, like gravy. <laughs> I like um, white gravy on mashed potatoes yes. a lot, like from chicken, like if you oh, make right. fried chicken. Like chicken fried steak. Yeah. I do, I like the white gravy, but I feel like sometimes people screw it up or, oh. so it's gelatinous. It's, or it's too it's watery. Watery yeah. gravy is the worst. I think on a Tuesday tea. night, one night we'll do like thickeners. Okay. Yeah, Ooh, what the what the different what the different thickeners are and what the properties are. I will say this, babe, your gravy is honestly the best gravy I've ever had. Yeah. So and I'm very, very snotty about it. Too. Yeah, so David, so, your Diana says she likes sunflower oil. Mm -hmm. which yeah. Is good to know because I've never actually cooked this. Sunflower oil you do have to be careful with because if you get it too hot, it'll kind of turn like a shellac Ooh. on your pan. Okay. But as long as you don't overburn it or over smoke it, you're okay. Good to know. I feel like we're watching Mystery Science 3000. It is like David is the movie and we're the commentary. But we need we need the commentary. Well, I mean, we always need. I'm not so good at the doing, but I'll judge people while they I, do it. Angie, this is one thing we have in common. I'm also not great at doing anything, but I have a lot of opinions. I think somebody yeah. should pay me always to be a consultant because I'll tell you exactly how it needs to be done and then I'll let you do it on your own. That is exactly my job. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, so Jerry I'm just finally said, chopping. So I'm going back over the top. Pork white gravy is what Jerry likes. I like pork white gravy, chicken white gravy. There's a, I like making um, a brown turkey gravy. Hmm. If we make turkey like for Thanksgiving or yes. a holiday. Jerry, but spicy so pork white gravy is white. It's what? So it's white. Spicy so pork white. So I'm whiter. asking Jerry well, hold on. Like where her limits are with this white condiment. Oh, uh, I question. Well, yes. she knows that the gravy is white because of um, milk, not. not because of something else. Oh, well, that, that's it's not, not a, it's not a yeah. cream. It's not this mystery cream. Jerry does hate all white condiments. You're right. Right? Generally, it's true. I'm going to need more. But so, yes, yeah, spicy pork white gravy is definitely what David makes. And it's, again, the best I've ever had. Yeah. And this is me coming from a, for someone who grew up in the South with mm -hmm. grandmothers who made this is gravy. David so is better. My family was also, so even though we were Indiana, we were Tennessee originals. Oh. And family in Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and oh. Florida. So the cooking was always superb. The best cooking you'll get is in the South. Oh, that's true. Hands that's, down. But so judgmental. Oh, it's right. Judgmental cooking. Well, <laughs> judgmental cooking. Yeah. <laughs> It's judgmental cooking. It's judgmental cooking that's so delicious. <laughs> okay. Oh, so uh, for the David, chicken. I'm sorry. Can you add to your list of um, to make uh You'll have to like write it down or something. Yeah, what is it? Collard greens. Collard greens. Yeah. That's a great idea. So to test if the chicken's done, the best way is to take one of the larger pieces, slice it in half, and just see if it's done. Jerry says Indiana is the South. Jerry, I disagree. It's nothing. above the Mason-Dixon line. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say nothing above the Mason-Dixon line counts. Not even Virginia. Not well. <laughs> That's, yeah. Debatable. Debatable. <laughs> but Indiana is not debatable. Indiana is not debatable. Uh, no. I mean, when Indiana was not part of the Confederacy. No, it was not part no. of the Confederacy. Neither was Texas or Florida. So they can serve both. Chicken. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. It's all nice and tender and yeah. cooked, and I'm it's gonna just put it over here. It's fluffy, even. Right? Nice job. Yeah. David, it smells wonderful in here, my love. It does, yeah. Oh, here we go. The people, the farms. I mean, the attitudes, perhaps. Yeah, but Jerry, but there's I think the that's thing. also an evolution. He, it was it? a stop the Underground Railroad was oh, taken okay. to. Oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. need to 
just resetting. We've got the red sauce cooking. I want to make sure the salt on it. And then I've been chopping the onions and the garlic to make the white sauce, the not Alfredo white sauce. What's the verdict? Hmm? What's the verdict? I want more, a little more salt, but actually the thing about um, red sauce, particularly tomatoes, is tomatoes break down the chemicals in garlic that have the flavor. Mm -hmm. So the tomatoes that we used kind of overdid the garlic a little bit, so I'm going to just add a little more. Okay. So look at him improvising on the spot. Right. This is what he cooks takes do. It. Takes it, he makes yeah. suggestions, he, he makes alterations. But also what I like is he knows how to yeah. change it. Yeah. That was my problem when I made my pasta sauce that fried to the bottom and scorched, was I didn't know how to fix it in like all of the Googling and calling of the people yeah. to figure out how to fix it. I didn't quite know. It was this a good learning true. experience, but David knows this stuff. I put in a dash for uh, dried basil as well. Well, Angie, I totally agree. One of my biggest things about cooking is that I feel intimidated by it because I don't, A, know what I'm doing. And I have to learn. I'm a person who learns by doing, yeah. not by being told what to do. So I have to actually do it. And then when I do it and I don't know what to do to fix it, I just kind of freeze and like, well, I, I don't care enough. anymore. Yeah. Right. True. I can order something until it's quarantined and everything and that you want is unavailable. Everything we want is unavailable. So yeah. guess what I've been learning to do? Cook. Have David cook for you. Or make a entire make my kitchen into a live studio audience. Yeah. So I can get the So we'll make the house into a studio. <laughs> this is called improvisation. Hey, quarantine it leads to innovation. Right? Quarantine leads to the best versions of ourselves. The best versions of ourselves. Yeah. My best version of myself currently is me wearing lots of headscarves. Your headscarves do look really good. I have to say, I'm right. I do miss your long hair though. I'm well my hair's about to be long. It is, yeah. Stay tuned. Stay, stay tuned. <laughs> All right. So the bulk of the sauce, the white sauce, is actually cream. Okay. You use half and half, but I like cream. I like a rich, hearty white sauce myself. So first, what we'll do for the white sauce is we will um, soften the onion, add the garlic, and then we will add the. Cream, turn it down. You don't want to bring it to a rolling boil because um, you can scorch the cream, and that's not awesome. Jerry's asking for more garlic, please. More garlic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got a pan on. Oh, I need to boil this. Let's see. Now I'm thinking to get this all kind of done at the same time. Got to get the spaghetti squash scraped out of the shells. I've got to make the white sauce, and I still have to boil the pasta. But I don't want the pasta to get cold, even though the sauce will heat back up a little bit. So let's just thinking in my head what to do. I'm going to start the sauce, scrape that while the white sauce is doing its thing. Turn the pan on. This is a copper skillet. It's actual copper. Um, copper you use at a lower temperature than you would like stainless. Okay. Like stainless steel okay. or something like that because it's a much better conductor. Um, it's got a hand white tin lining. If you have copper and you're using it and you have an open space, a total open space that would be about the volume of a quarter, you need to not use it. You need to go get it repaired. There's a place in Jerome, Arizona that you can send your pans and get them retinned if you don't know how to do it yourself. Or if you're handy and have a big blowtorch, you could retain it yourself. Do you know how to do that? Well, in theory, I've never done it, but I looked on how to do it so that I could maintain my own pan so I know what to do. Yeah, he, he got these pans when we were actually in Jerome, Arizona. And he was like, I'm going to, into one of the, with a woman um, who was the um, proprietor of this copper shop we went to. She, she was like, here's some stuff. And he was like, oh, I can just retin this. Yeah, David's fake. That's great. Yeah. I'll just take, buy this and retin it myself. <laughs> I love that. Uh -huh. I'm like, so he I'll has, pay somebody to do it. So he's got some stuff that he wants to retend. Cool. All right. So I'm going to just make a little thickening agent before we get started so I don't have to mess with it later. I'm going to just put a couple tablespoons of flour in this cup and then use cold water when you're mixing dry flour. And this is all-purpose 
This is all perfect. Hey David, when you uh, come back, show the camera your co coffee mug because your sister got that for you for Christmas. Alright. The inappropriate coffee mug. Inappropriate coffee mug. It says... Can you see it? It says, flip my balls. <laughs> It's a pinball coffee, because David Spink loves pinball machines, and he has Right, of there's a machines. Dolly Parton pinball machine right over there. It just says, your sister got you this for Christmas. That's fantastic. It's cute, right? Yeah, it is. See the flippers and all? It's really good. Uh, Jerry wants to know, has David taken his pans to Jerome? No, we bought the copper ones in Jerome. So I'm just, um, cold water, and you use cold water so that the flour doesn't clump. It'll mix better. If you use hot water, it'll make balls, and then it'll be like pasty on the outside and dry on the inside, and no way to break them apart, and end up with like monkey gravies and things like that. So anytime you're cooking with flour to make a roux that is in the water that you're going to be mixing in later with the oil, um, mix it with cold water, and it will save you a lot of grief. Jerry says she wants a drum, Arizona. <laughs> she would. It's one of my favorite towns. Really? Jerome, Arizona is one of my favorite cities. Is this one of, I think you might have sent me pictures from here. It's like it's, Wild Wild West. It's Wild Wild West. West. It's super yeah, cool. It's an abandoned copper mine. Yep, that's exactly it. If you're near Sedona. And I love Sedona. I prefer, I also like to tell you that Jerome is cooler. Oh, I'm not even telling you. I'm not, can't even fit you. Jerome is, Jerome, if you have to, first of all, Sedona is awesome. Yeah. If you're in Sedona, okay. Jerome's like an hour away. Okay. Highly recommended. Okay. So that's so, the so Sedona is a little bit more around than tourism. So Sedona's pretty great. It's just very um I like it. I'm, I, I, I have like nothing it. to I have no, no complaints about okay. Sedona. I prefer Jerome. Okay. I got my um uh, my palm red while I was in Sedona. Did you? I, I went on that. an alien um, tour at night where we watched where the woman took us in her Buick. <laughs> Full circle. See, I love to weave in a storyline. Um, we went to these UFO tours, and she took us in her little Buick with me, my friend Jenna, and another couple. They were they were like a full couple, uh, and we went to the middle of nowhere and watched in with a night vision goggles into the sky to see the UFOs. By the way, what we saw were satellites in orbit. <laughs> but the one that put in some butter in with the onions and the white sauce. I'm sorry. Did you put, two tablespoons. Did you put oil in there? I put a little bit, okay. but I really like the flavor of the butter bennets. And when you I put the oil and the butter together, the butter tends not to burn. Oh, nice. Hey, David, Jerry says thanks for the tip on flour. She always screws that up. And you also have someone here saying, hi, David, and it's G.S. I don't know if you know this name. Uh, G. Splits. Whatever that is. Yeah. Anyway, you have someone here saying hi, David. Well, hello, oh, whoever somebody is. Toaster. Will you tell us more about yourself? Hi. Hello. All right. Softening the onions. The sauce is going. It's boiling. What are you using the whipping cream for? I forget. The base of the white sauce is whipping cream. So we're going to take the onions, soften them, add the garlic for about 60 seconds. You're going to pour in the cream. We're going to bring that up to almost a simmer, and then we will add the um, little bit of oregano and a little bit of basil, but not too much because we, we want it to still be a white sauce, just for some flavor. And then we're going to add some cheese. And I have a mixed Italian type that's got some mozzarella and it has Parmesan and Romano all in one. So I'm not going to have to deal with figuring out you know, all of this stuff. I just bought it pre-shredded. David, the newest person is uh, Gianna from LHS. From where? LHS. Oh, really? Hi, Gianna. I know exactly who she is. We went, like, through grade school, middle school, and high school together, I think, until I left in the senior year, and I disappeared. You when we to went, moved to Guam. You moved to Guam. Yeah. Taking the opportunity with to plant, I got. With your whipping cream, I yes. know it's at 30% fat. 
when I go to the grocery store, there's heavy cream, heavy whipping cream, half and half, right. different kinds of How that has to be decide what you need? All right, so whipping cream is 30%, and I think heavy cream is either 34 or 38%, and that's the amount of fat that's in the oh, thing. The fat content. Fat content. That actually fries. Right. It whips up. Right. Yeah. You have to have a high, higher fat content to get that to whip. Hey, David, uh, Jerry wants us to let us know that Matt is watching Mateo, and he says hello. Hi. Hi, Mateo. Hi, Matt. Jerry. Uh, oh, sorry, Matt, Angie, and Jeremy, and David are all here. We say hi. Also, David, um, your brother, I'm sorry, your brother's asking, um, Angela's wondering where your cat and dog are. Are they jailed for the stream? <laughs> no, so the dog is lying next to Jeremy. Sound asleep. Sound asleep. And the cat is hiding from all the screaming. Oh, the cat's upstairs asleep. Yeah. Where the, oh, maybe? we can see the cat yeah, right here. Yeah, there he is. That's his yeah. little spot. Oh, yeah. So, in our apartment, there's a loft section up here, a mezzanine, and there's a cat bed right on the edge, and the cat lays in the bed and looks down at his domain. <laughs> and it's under my desk where I work from, so like, I often will be up here and accidentally kick him, and he'll claw me. Fair enough. Fair enough. Oops. I spilled a little. Alright, so while that's heating, I'm going to turn the water up a little more. Uh, David, Jerry wants to let us know that Matt is beaming. Oh. Also, I got a little warning here that your battery is running low on your computer. Why is it not plugged in? I'm not sure. Uh, I think when we were wrenching it around earlier, it got unplugged. Oh, sorry. There. Thank Better? you. Better? I didn't. I didn't know that where that was. Okay. All right. So this is on low, like a simmer temperature, to slowly come up because I don't want the oil in the cream to break apart because then it'll just become like oil. The cream in whipping cream is butter. The fat in whipping cream is butter fat. And just like butter, it can melt if you get it too hot. So we're slowly bringing it up. Spaghetti squash. We have it cooked and now you just scrape out the insides from the shell. And then kind of like just take it apart and you end up with a little like angel hair pasta type filaments from the squash itself. So if you can't eat flour, um, this is a great option. Or if you want to be more vegetarian or get more vegetables, it does have a bit of a squashy flavor, but it's not too overwhelming, if, you know. But it's a fun little option, particularly to get children maybe to eat vegetables. Yay. So shredding it kind of like, it was pulled pork, just to make sure it comes apart and it's not in big chunks. David, I'm going to walk into the kitchen and just steal the champagne. Do it. Angie, make yourself at home. Oh, did we get the other one out of the freezer? You're our special guest today. I'm oh, sorry. Super cold. Would you like a refill? I would not. Okay. All right. All right. So this is part enough so that we can use it as a servable element. We'll put it in its own little bowl. Uh, right. Right there. You can thank Katie Campbell for this recipe. Thank you, Katie. It's this streak is called the Katie. The Katie. So called, this streak is called the Katie. She, she invented it. <clears throat> I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of it too. Also, just leaving the room and coming back into it reminds me how great it smells. All right, it's so easy to kind of become nose blind to yeah. what food you're true. cooking. I, a moment ago, I left the dressing room and came back, and the smell was overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. It smells great really in here. Good. It really does. Yeah. If you like garlic, this is the place to be <laughs> today. Wait, everyone, hold on. We're going to pop. Hold on, hold on, hold on. A very special moment. Yeah. There, there we go. Nice. That was perfect. Um, 
Hey David, Gianna yeah. says yum spaghetti squash or husbands. <laughs> Poor husbands? And she, and she says, um, you're much less messier when making spaghetti squash than she is. Oh. <laughs> It's only because I planned ahead and I'm trying to not make a mess as I go. Yeah, Gianna, because he's... Usually, he's, I just keep going and don't clean it. Yeah. David's a pretty messy cook, but he's a great cook. Yeah. So I'm trying to up my game because, you know, cameras and people. <laughs> You're doing pretty good. My I, dad always said, like, if a, uh, his take was, like, if sandwich isn't messy, then it's not a good sandwich. I agree. So, so no, I agree. So I don't... One time I remember someone saying to me, if a burger doesn't drip down your arms, it is not, not a good, good burger. And I agree. The I messier agree. the food, the better it is. Yep, I do. Do you want me to put that in the fridge? Do you think we're going to go through it fast enough? This will be gone in 10 minutes. Yes. Just time that. Cheers. <laughs> it's going to get weird. All right. Things are going to get real weird. Ramping it up. Ramping Just it up. Just mixing the cream with the spatula flat. Because I don't want to like slush it out. If you use a spoon and do this, you're going to... Splash cream all around. Just wait for it to come up to temperature. Okay. Here it comes. Alright. Use any type of pasta you like. I like the little bow tie type. For fall? I don't know how to say the word, huh? Farfalet. Farfalet? Yeah. It's one of those words I've never heard out loud. But I like the shape of them. Um, they work great with the pasta. They absorb the flavor. Oh, a I bit. Think that's kind of but also, for pasta. because they're kind of little, they got little um, indentions on them that like hold some of the sauce on it. And that's I think it's a point. fun, like textural presentation with the chicken and the sauce and having the little ridged edges. They're all dressed up. Yeah. What's going on? I have been trying to talk Jerry into just coming over on ferry and eating with us. But would you believe that there's no boat until 4.15? Uh, what? There's no ferry till 4.15? All right. <sighs> I know. Pandemic's got us all. Pandemic's back. terrible. Oh, I still have some lemon, lemon drop left. There you go. Mm. So for those of you who don't know, that's my husband Jeremy, who's um, glamming for the camera there. <laughs> He's a ham. I'm a ham. Alright, so keeping an eye on this so that it doesn't get too, too hot too quickly. I'm actually wanting to see how warm it is. Uh, oh, that tastes so good. Hey, David, Gianna says that yes. spaghetti squash is a good way to get children's husbands to eat veggies. Right? <laughs> Isn't it? And then Jerry wants to let us know that it's reduced ferry service. We know, Jerry, we're just giving you a hard time. But also, Jerry, why don't you just get on a ferry and come over here? Just oh, my God. I mean, all, you, all you're going to do is infect us all with a disease. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, she has no disease. Meanwhile, no. she's so oh, like, no. careful. Well, well, also careful. I think, yeah. I think now we go to phase two. Right, phase two. Circle of trust. Ten friends. Circle of trust. Look at less than ten people here. Jerry. I don't even know ten people in Seattle. Yes, you do. <laughs> I do. So do I. <laughs> All right, so I'm just taking and that yeah, pre-shredded cheese and just adding it to the warm cream. Is this two cups of cheese in the bag and you're adding all two cups? Yeah. 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 And then... Sometimes, so I did overestimate, I guess, on the on the recipe. It should be about two cups. Yeah. So um, by weight, that's eight ounces. And Gianna says, you know, Jeremy, every good cook needs a good bartender. And Gianna, I could not agree more. Right. And thank you for recognizing my special skill set. Yes, thank you. Shout out. Shout out. Yeah. So uh, David's brother mentioned an Angela, which is also my name. Who oh. Angela and the family? David's brother is named Rod, uh, mm -hmm. after his father, who's also named Rod. Okay, Riddell. Rodney. R Riddell. 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 Right, right, right. So, uh, actually, I'm putting four cups. I, mean, I am following the recipe. You're doing four cups? I'm doing four cups. Good. I approve. I also approve. More yeah. cheese. More cheese. So, Roddy, 
um, the caveman's older brother, and his wife is named Angela, and we love her. Oh, nice. Yeah. Angelas are great. I think there's nothing better than Angela. They're Angelas, right? really. Angela, Angelina Jolie. Cal. So I'm putting on my, my baseball? <laughs> Possibly a miss. <laughs> yeah, that might be the outlier. Outlier. And since I don't have the lay for Reagan, I'm putting in a little less, like I mentioned earlier. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Jeremy is saying, oh my goodness, I think, to the dog. Yeah, speaking of uh, Angela, so Angela, you were asking earlier where the dog was. Well, our dog has been asleep next to me on the couch, and she just woke up, and she could not be more sleepy and tired and kissy and cuddly. I took a couple of pictures for everybody She's on, so, so we'll sweet, baby them. girl. She is, yeah. She's got those big puppy dog eyes that make you want to curl up and just lay down with the She's dog. 10 years old, and she still look, looks like a puppy. She does, except for those gray the gray under eyes yeah. and then she tries to kill people there's that there's that but she did not try to kill me in fact it was quite opposite i'm pretty sure it was no she loves gravy. you she, she actually loves people she's yeah, really she good she's really really, really good with people so you can tell it's actually cheese sauce oh it looks cheese. really good actually i am not going to need the flour everything is looking nice and thick i like a nice thick white sauce and that's why it's not an alfredo because it um Sticks to the noodles better. That's what she said. Right? Water boiling, toss it in. What is this? Ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna give it a mix in the pot before it starts to boil because the water will soften and start on the outside of the pasta. Happens with spaghetti too. And it can um, stick together. So while you're waiting for it to come back to a boil, occasionally just give it a light stir. Actually, this is more thick than I expected because I just went crazy. But I have more cream. I can thin this back down. Oh, so that's kind of it, right? You can put in too much cheese, but you can thin it down by adding more cream. Right. But the risk that you run is not having enough garlic and onion then. But right. you don't run that risk because you... you know, I start very heavy on those two. Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, great commentary here, Angela. Thank you. <laughs> I do love food. I know you love food. I also love food. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a very um, robust eater. <laughs> same. Same, uh, yeah. Same, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I once took a, a couple of cooking classes. Oh, you did? And yeah, yeah. Well, in typical Angie fashion, I have to be kind of a perfectionist and like, look how great I am. Yeah. Kind of thing. And the woman was like, you like to cook, don't you? And of course, my head just swelled. Swell, and I was yes. like, yes, I do. Uh -huh. And clearly, I didn't know anything I was doing. No. But we were learning how to cook um, some uh, Thai specialties. Okay. And it was like the basics even of sweating the onions. Uh-huh. And when See. you sweat the onions, you don't stir them because you're actually trying to cook out the moisture. And it was like she was so smart in giving mm. me that compliment uh -huh, because uh -huh. she knew I needed it. I and clearly I did not know what I was doing because I didn't even know what sweating the onions was. But see, so I also love when someone tells me just basic stuff, but yeah. also compliments me. So yeah. for example, if someone ever told me, Hey, you, this was a really great cook. You, you made a great meal. I'd be like, well, I own a five-star restaurant. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank His you very much. David <laughs> His name is David Spade. <laughs> you don't own me. So. Darn. Jerry says eating is her specialty. Same, Jerry, same. same. This is why we're Jerry. all friends. That's right. Jerry, no. let's just teach Josh that this is all science and he can cook for us all the time. Actually, you know what? That's the great way to get Josh into baking is to yep. tell him it's all about science. It's all about Josh science. is such a science-oriented kid. Yeah. He would love that. Yeah, and we would love that. And he's also so smart, and I would love Yeah, exactly. We would love the benefits of that. Yeah. Josh, make us blueberry stout. Stout. So if we are it. going to be making, on May 5th, which happens to be Cinco de Mayo on the Tuesday night show, Yes. we're going to be making some salsa and guacamole and stuff like that. And because I do have some cream, I'm going to make my own sour cream. <gasps> what? With lemon? Do you put lemons in it and make, make it curdy? All well, gas. because also, I like, um, if you make salad dressings and if you're going to make chicken, 
And you want to, I'm going to just put the rest in here. Is this technically crema then? Huh? What you're making is crema? Oh, he loves crème no, fraîche. No, yes, that. I'm making actual. It's actually closer to crème fraîche. Okay. David, tell her about crème fraîche. You love that. Yeah. yeah. So crème fraîche is the French type of sour cream, mm -hmm. and it's cultured. So you can buy like now they're starting to sell cultured sour cream. It's very close, but it has a richer and a nuttier flavor. And you make it by taking about a cup, plus or minus, of cream, and a couple of tablespoons of buttermilk. Look, you've got that buttermilk from us making a fried chicken next weekend. Uh -huh. Right. And then you just stir it up. I didn't even know we had buttermilk. <laughs> That's just because Jeremy was I'm going to finish putting the third <laughs> tablespoon in. <laughs> All right. What? what you want, though, is you do not want ultra pasteurized cream. You just want pasteurized cream. And buttermilk is. And buttermilk. It's, it's a cultured milk. Okay, it's cultured milk, but it's like fresh out of the cow. It's a little lumpier. It's, right. Um, it still has. It's not. This is a whole buttermilk. It's sanitized. not low fat. There you go. It's got all the fats in right. it, but not the cream. It has a rather pungent flavor. If you've never had it, so if you have like cheesecloth, I'd put like three or four layers and put it over the top. I don't have any cheesecloth. You today. do have cheesecloth. Tim Jenkins sent you cheesecloth. I used a bunch of. Cheese oh, oh, so oh. instead, I'm going to just loosely cover this. And what you don't know about sour cream is they make it by doing this, and it sits there for 24 hours. Kind of like yogurt. And then you put a yes, and then you can put like a airtight cover on it. But while it's culturing and the the yeast or whatever it is that's in there that makes it work, um, it lets the gas out. Because, um, what do you call it? Carbon dioxide is typically the byproduct, and you don't want it to explode. Gianna says low fat is an abomination, and I couldn't agree more, Gianna. And also, Joshua is here. Hey, Josh. Hey, Josh. Josh, we love you. Hey, Josh, I'm so glad you joined. Josh, we love you and we miss you. And we'll hopefully see you again soon after quarantine is over, and we can all cook together. Yes, you can come over and we'll make something. Yes, Gianna, I also agree with you. Low fat is an abomination. Agreed. I yes. mean, come on. What? what I still doing? spilled a little bit, but yum. So really, it's cheese sauce and red sauce, but. David, you'll appreciate this. My grandma used to only drink buttermilk. Oh, uh, drink buttermilk? She only drank buttermilk. Really? Yeah. Huh. She was like fresh off the farm. Oh, so one time, and Gianna knows the people in the story. I was spending the night with Kelly Shover when we were kids, and his mom brought us to the Sunset Strip, which was a nightclub in Fairbanks. We were Wait, hold on. young. There's a place called the Sun Strip, Sunset, Sunset Strip, Strip in Fairbanks, Alaska. In Fairbanks. Yes. And they oh. had brunch on the weekend, and so for breakfast that day, we got in the car and spent the night, and we went out and he um, was wondering what buttermilk was because it was on the menu and his mom said you can order it but you have to drink it. <gasps> oh no, it's kind of chunky. It's Ooh. really thick. Yeah. Did he um, drink it? Well, he tried for a little bit and I think his mom relented. I can't remember. I just remember the lead up with, with the fret <laughs> and it was just yeah, so funny to me. Really well but people use buttermilk a lot for fried chicken, for example. Right. You use and it in cakes. So when you make um, like salad dressings, like ranch or any white type salad dressing, one of the main things that you put in is buttermilk because it will actually work to thicken the sauce or the, the, the dressing as it cultures with the other ingredients okay. in the same way that the sour cream is being done. Oh, because it's the fat. Huh? The enzymes the in the buttermilk okay. react with the Got with it. the fat. So as Jerry says, "Oh my God, gross!" Although she's gonna make her buttermilk pie for you at some point. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then Gianna says, "Oh my God, the sun strips, sunset strip." She's having like a, a like a reminiscent moment. Right. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Right on the. What I don't remember the name. Was it South Coast? Gianna, I just went to oh. Fairbanks for the first time. Remember when I went in September? Yeah. And uh, um, what do you think of it, Angie? I loved Fairbanks, but so things that she'll probably find funny. I didn't understand why everybody's car had an electrical cord coming out of its front end, and it's so you know, 
because it gets so cold in Burbank, so you actually have to plug your car in to heat it up. Really? Yeah, they make engine block warmers yes. so that the um, oil in the in the car doesn't like gel and make it so that the engine can't turn over. I have never heard of that. Really? So you go to like JCPenney's or Walmart or whatever, and in the parking lot there's these poles, right? And it's not. And you just plug car. your car into the pole at the end of your parking spot. So this is what I've always said: Alaska is a, it's another world. It is another world. And so the um, so I went to the the mine, the miners, the uh, the bar called them the mine or something like that, and the fox. I think it's another Oh, bar. out in Fox. Yeah. Fox is a town outside of Fairbanks. Um, but the bar was called, but it was in Fairbanks, and the bar was called. What was it called? The Fox. John will probably be able to tell us. Yeah, so GMA. I know that it's the Fox Roadhouse. And the battery blanket, yeah. Battery blanket, And it was says. right by a place that gave uh, breakfast that had uh, bagels and all sorts of baked goods. She might know this stuff. But the, the mine, the mine, the. Miners, something like that, was this fantastic space that was redone. So the back of the bar you walked down into, and it was a live cut bar all around it, and then right. it went upstairs as well. Anyway, I loved Fairbanks. I was there in September. I've Did you go to Pioneer life. Park? Mm, I don't think so. Oh, David okay. and I have been up to Alaska a couple times to visit his uncle, mm -hmm. um, who lives in Anchorage. Yeah. But we've never been. We've been there twice, right, David? Oh. We've, we've never been to Fairbanks. So that, that's one thing that we want to do. And hey, David, um, Gianna says uh, the Midnight Mine. The Midnight yes. Mine. Yes. Yes. Gianna knew it. Gianna knew it. Gianna knew it. Yeah, yeah, Gianna did. And, and just so you know, Josh is here, and he typed in that he's going to make shake and bake chicken tonight for dinner. So good fun. Josh, cool. that's awesome. It was Gianna, the same place, yeah. All right. So we're just waiting for the pasta to cook. The chicken's done. The spaghetti squash for Jeremy is done. The pasta's cool. boiling. The white sauce is just lightly simmering, if you can see the little bubbles. I'm not going to carry this over because this pan is very full, and I do not want an ocean wave of cheese cream sauce flying around the room. I want that. <laughs> and Bring the it. red sauce. Bring it on. And the red sauce is just doing its thing. It smells so good here. Yeah, well, it actually does smell right. great. The midnight mic. Also, you guys should come sometime because Luke, who's my significant other, uh, lived in Fairbanks for a while. Okay. And, right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe and, I thought I told you that. Yeah. Oh. And, so he was in the army. Oh, um, uh, so he's at Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne, right? Turn it. I was trying to check the noodle to see if they were done, I just and was trying to look up at the same time and toss it. Look at David's short shorts. They're not that I short. I love David's shorts. They could be shorter. They could be. They could be shorter. I'd like them to be shorter. What do you think? Maybe next week. Okay. <laughs> because yeah, Seattle, be we're going into summer. Cooking means it's going to be really hot in here while we do this, so, you know. we have no air conditioning. Is it no. hard less? Mm. Yeah, so you guys could come cook at my place too. If do you have air conditioning? Too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we do have air conditioning, two units in our place. Oh, well, so oh, well we I'm going to be putting in two windows. Like the wall. Roll but, around the Oh, those are better. Yeah. yeah. What you have is better than we have. So, but the only thing, though, is do you guys have an electric stove top or a gas? I electric. prefer gas. We prefer I gas because it's electric. But the building is electric. Because of electric. global warming, blah, blah, blah. Um, Seattle is not allowing any more new construction with gas. That's okay. actually not true. What? Really? Babe, I look on Realtor.com literally every five minutes looking for a place for us to buy and they all have new gas. All the new construction has gas. Also, by the way, well, have you seen the Well, maybe it just hasn't come into effect yet and it's in plan, but I read that oh. it's coming up and there won't be any. Okay. Well, because also Seattle committed to um, carbon-free Neutral? By, yeah, carbon-neutral oh, by right. 2022 or... <sighs> or right. something, so they would eventually have to cut that, yeah, but yeah. probably not right now. Well, then we'll, when, we, when it comes time for us to buy a place, we just have to buy a place of gas. <laughs> or make your own. Or make your own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so but also, induction stove tops are pretty spectacular. They are, because yeah. they're immediately hot. Right. So we and the stove the top itself great. is not hot. The pan itself gets hot, but the stove top is cool to the touch all the time. Yeah. All right, so don't forget I was going to say with the sour cream, if you want to see how it turns out, tune in on, tu on Tuesday. I'll be putting it in the fridge um, late Sunday or Monday. What's going on? Okay, 
No, Jer just Angie may come over on Tuesday again for that for the sour for cream sure. reveal. I'll be here. Um, Jerry wants us to all come over to her house and cook on her gas stove. Yes, Jerry, as soon as quarantine is lifted, let's do it. Or Jerry now because Jerry you also. haven't been out at all, and we haven't been out, let's and we're allowed to have ten friends in one place at one time. I'm gonna get in a car right now. <laughs> Uh, Gianna wants to know what neighborhood we live in in Seattle. So Gianna, we live in a neighborhood called Pioneer Square. Um, it's downtown, and it's what like you know, what would you say like a bit of, like a mile south of like Pike Place Market. Yeah. Yeah, it's about a mile south. We can walk. I mean, it's over. We walk there for groceries. Yeah, great. I walked there last night to buy the groceries that you saw us cooking. Not buy. to brag, but we walked to Pike Place Market for groceries. For groceries. So I like, during quarantine. I would like to rub that in mm -hmm. as much as possible. Right. <laughs> All right, the pasta's there. almost done, so we'll get some plates out. Jerry Actually, says that we are her circle. Who knows? Right back at you, babe. Oh, I'm eating in a bowl. Do you want a bowl or a plate? Bowl. Okay, Jeremy, you want your fancy bowl? I would love my fancy bowl, please. That's his fancy bowl. It's really not my fancy bowl. It's a bowl that I like. A bowl that you like. Yeah. This is a fun bowl because it has a very narrow bottom. So everything gets down to the bottom where you can easily scoop it back up. Yes. You should have more bowls like that. Right? Great okay. area. Yes, Gianna, it is a great area. David, you take that bowl because I want you to have the best bowl and the best experience. No, no, you did all the okay. work. You did all the work. Oh. Well, you use the special bowl for the special Or we give a bowl. special bowl to Angie. Oh, She's our guest today. Special. Jerry, you should record Josh saying it's shake and bake and he helped. Yeah. Safe space. Gianna says great area. It is a great in. area. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I agree. We live in a pretty great area. But Gianna, I also love Alaska. And so every year for my birthday, um, well, starting last year. <laughs> um, just so you know, it takes year. one time to make a tradition. Right. So it's, the new tradition is going to Alaska to ski. Yes. Right? And if you guys cannot hurt yourself for We are long Olympic enough, level skiers, Angie. Right? And I'm still literally in there's a knee brace hobbling around. I know. There's a spa and there's uh, a hot tub and a, a salt water pool at Alaska, so you can ski. What did we ski? Like four to six hours, and then we would go get high. I don't know if that's appropriate for it's, this, but we would get high, yes. and we would go down and sit in the hot tub, and then go sit in the sauna, and then we would come back up, get ready for dinner, and go out, go out to the bar. That sounds like the most perfect day ever. Right, for for because my birthday is tomorrow, we're taking a mirror on it. You oh, is it really? You get an extra day for your yes, birthday? Every year. You were so lucky. I know. I mean, I'm pretty sure he did that for me and he did. all of the black people. He did that especially for you, but I, also after dinner can create right. equality. It's unfortunate because I think I'm really meant to be in that group, but I'm white. I mean. So I really appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> I really thank you. I'm okay for. Gianna says. For, for everyone. Gianna says she misses skiing. So Gianna, just right? so you know. Yeah. Um, I have ad adopted skiing as a new hobby until until I fell literally the weekend before quarantine yeah. and tore my ACL and busted my knee and had a huge bone contusion. I mean, we're talking hospital the whole nine. I have to have surgery, which has now been postponed because it's a non-essential surgery. Uh, so I'm just hobbling around for the next, I don't know, six months. Right. Yep. And then 10 days after he busted his knee, I fell skiing. And towards I'm Mount Baker, and I had a tear in my calf, which has been not awesome. No, you can tell by looking, because David has beautiful calves. Oh, David's calves are amazing. For instance, when I first moved to Pioneer Square, I was driving to work. I, oh. I work in East Lake. Talk a little louder, make sure everyone can hear. I, was, I work in East Lake, which is a 20-minute drive up I-5. Anyway. So I was coming through Pioneer Square, and I called David Spink because I was like, I don't know if that was you, but it looked like your cow standing on the corner. <laughs> Are you out and about today? And he's like, yeah, that was totally me. And I was like, I definitely recognize you by your beautiful legs. She and recognizes calves. So well, and he was wearing pants, too. At no, the time. he <laughs> has the best legs. Oh, and he, legs. He, also, he has the best legs, and he also has the best butt I've ever seen in my right, life. Great body. So today I showed up and I said, I know exactly which calf you have messed up because it's swollen. It's swollen, and right? It's uncomfortable looking. Yeah. And he said right. it's not super uncomfortable uh, for anyone that cares. But, uh, oh, but it I definitely, um, it looks engorged and I felt uh, selfishly like his other calf should be that large. <laughs> <laughs> 
just not keeping up with the Joneses. Right, yeah. Um, so well, Gianna says, Angie, after the day that you described, she would sleep like a baby. <laughs> me, too, me too, Gianna. Me too. Gianna, I didn't sleep like a baby. It was great. And that she's at home alone laughing out loud. Good. Gianna. Good. I'm so proud. I can't wait for you to come and meet everybody. Yeah, yeah Gianna, get up here. Or we'll meet you in Fairbanks. Actually, right, John, are you still in Fairbanks? Yeah, John, oh, yeah. where do you live, Banks? Do you still live in Fairbanks? Because if so, I, so. I smell a trip. Maybe, maybe she yeah. does. Jerry says, uh, hi oh. there, I'm just wondering if you guys are coming over tomorrow. Josh. Jerry, are we invited or are we just fairy? Hey, Maybe Josh. I'll come right over. We don't know if we've been invited, Josh. Yeah. Um, and also, yeah. we're not sure. You want chicken, Jeremy? I would love some chicken, babe. Thank you so much. Andrew, chicken? Chicken, please. All right. <laughs> and we're coming up on time. I know. This is perfect. It's perfect, perfect timing. So, David, what have you made for us today? So, we have some pasta with um, a red sauce, marinara type sauce. And a white cheese sauce. It's a faux alfredo. She's so good. Hmm. Well, it smells wonderful. And earlier we made some bruschetta and the mayonnaise chicken, which obviously, as you can see, Jerry, does not look like tannins. Just so you know, Gianna now lives in Baltimore and she moved oh. away from Alaska in 98, but her family is still there. Oh, then Gianna, have you seen the new? Midnight Mice, because it looks fantastic. And there's our next class. Oh, Gianna, let's know when your next class reunion is. Our class is so unorganized. And actually, Gianna, this is interesting right? because David we and I were talking about this. On Monday. Last we really, David and I, so we took, both of us took Monday off from work, uh, and we just drove around forever, and we were talking about stuff like this, and he had mentioned that, you know, he gra you graduated in high school in 85, right? Yeah. And I did in 95. So t 2020, this year, is my 25th reunion, your 35th. And I was yeah. asking him, like, my class is already planning a 25th, so is he doing anything? And he said, oh, I'm not sure. Right. We were, yeah, we were just talking about, because the last one that we had was Trish and I texting and messaging on Facebook and stuff and decided to try to get something together. And then I couldn't go because of things happening in Atlanta. So it happened without me. But... We should uh, try to put something together and figure out what would be the best place. Because the fall. The 20 year reunion that we had awesome. in Las Vegas was actually really awesome. And we had an interesting turnout because people that lived in the lower 48, as we call yeah. the rest lower of America. Lower 48, so strange. Right? Um, I've never heard of that before. And outside, anything yeah. not in Alaska is outside. I've just never heard that before. Yeah. Well, anyway, so. I think that went really well, and maybe we should just become the committee and make it happen. Yeah, actually, I agree. David, that's a good idea. I agree. By the way, I think when you have an idea and um, you want to make something to be executed, you yeah. just take the reins and do it. So I think right now, Gianna and David Spake are the class reunion committee for your class. Angie, do you want both sauces? Yes, please. And I vote October. Uh, October is the best for so everything. Gianna, it was still a bit of a dive, um, but. It wasn't, so Luke lived there in, gosh, I'm trying to remember. So he and I met in 2008, I think. So he must have lived there in the early 2000s. Uh, and so he hadn't been there for a while either. So it had, you just been, want red, right? Sorry. It had been like I want revised red sauce, yes, thank you. since then. It seemed like a relatively new, like, update to it, but it was, it was a dye. But like pretty inside, if that makes sense. Actually, it makes a lot of sense. Right, it was dark, kind of like uh, pool tables. Okay. Um, I, uh, not a karaoke. Uh, what's that called? When you can select what music you want it to play. A jukebox? jukebox? Angie, have, jukebox. You, have you ever heard of a thing called a jukebox? I have, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I had a, a this, this thing called, a newfangled thing called a jukebox. A newfangled thing. Um, but for instance, I'm pretty sure it played Nickelback. Nickelback. Right. Well, that, that was the fault of the person who selected the song, I not agree. the fault of the jukebox. No, it was well, actually the fault of the jukebox. The jukebox. The jukebox. Well, the jukebox should never have had Nickelback. Here's our, well, it on if you here's like our uh, I white sauce. Nickelback. It mm. was great. Anyway, Gianna, you should go. 
Yeah. Yeah. It was All right. Let's come over here, people. Okay. Okay. Let's have some May I just say about, a, about a dive bar, though? Yes. The, the darker the vibe and the stickier the floor, the better, better the bar. Yes, uh, and it was. It will still you bring a little like, bowl of bread when you come? Yep. Yeah. It, it still had like a life edge wood. <laughs> Tasting time. It had life edge wood and it had a jukebox and it had a sticky floor and dogs were allowed inside. It sounds like it's, this it is, was is it called a dive bar or oh, it should be. Oh, well, we can make another bowl later and take a picture of it to post for the recipes. But I've just put together as kind of a Neapolitan with a red stripe and a white stripe. Oh my gosh, it's so and pretty. I'm going to actually mix mine. Smells great, David. All right, That's everyone, nice. I'm coming closer to give you the close yeah, please up. Enjoy. It's so good. So good. So good. Okay. Angie, what does it smell like to you? Garlic in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> we should watch The Lost Boys mm. while we eat this. I have been watching The Lost Boys the entire time we've been doing this show. <laughs> mm. uh, I love a mixed. Oh my gosh, David, this is so good. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else cooked for me since I cooked for me. <laughs> I have to say, baby, this is great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really good. You're just a great mm -hmm. cook. You really are. Yeah. If there's one thing that you can do better than anyone I know, it's cooking. Mm -hmm. Maybe the only thing I would change would be a little more of the peppers in the red sauce to make it a, a little, little spicier, spicier and give it a little mm -hmm. more kick. I agree. I would like I, this to be more spicy. I like spicy a lot, me so too. I would agree. Yeah. This is great as it is, but, but if I, I like that part filet. Yeah, right. It's really good. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Uh -huh. The, spot, the yeah. pasta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it coats really well. The sauce sticks to it, which is the point of the white sauce. And the reason I make it so thick is because I like to mix it with the red sauce, and the red sauce will break it down and water it down yeah. and make it like um, fall apart and not really stick to the noodle. So if you were only making the white sauce, I would say cut down the cheese by probably about half. But if you're going to be mixing them like I did, I will leave it just like this. I also think the chicken has really good flavor on its own. The chicken is particularly <laughs> <laughs> The chicken is particularly good. Okay. Right, I'll just use paper towel. Right, I can sample the Davis cleanliness while cooking. <laughs> that was so funny. Didn't quite get that off the fork. So simple, spaghetti, spaghetti squash is practically foolproof. Oops, sorry. Slice it in half, take the seeds out, yeah. put it in the baking dish, put a couple tablespoons of water, wrap, cover it with foil or a lid, put it in the oven for 30 to 45 minutes. <laughs> You'll know when your spaghetti squash is actually cooked because the um, when you go to scoop it out, it'll just come right out the way you saw when I did it. Oh, sorry. If it's undone. Yeah, the, you can't get your spoon into it, put it back in the oven. Or if it doesn't shred easily, you can just put it back in the oven. Were there any questions or comments on the chat while we were up here? Yes, so Gianna says there's always a place for you to stay in Baltimore. And David, you can come cook in her kitchen. Your mother says that you're they're watching you in the car right now. It's sometimes intermittent, but in general, it looks great. And Gia also says that she's super hungry. Who? Jerry, Gia. Uh, Hi, Gia. No, sorry, Gianna. Hi, says Gianna. That she's super hungry. And she loves garlic. And Jerry says she's jealous to her core. Mmm. Your sister Deanna says yummy. She wishes she had some chicken. And also, just so you know, Jake so Beckman has also been watching, but he's just on the periphery and very quiet. Oh, Jake Ekman never wants to talk oh. about anything. No. Also, it's if you haven't done so yet, mm -hmm. on the Twitch channel right there, on the top of the stream, the if you don't have it full screen, no, um, is a little heart. If you please follow, it would help a lot. And the uh, heart is the follow button on Twitch. And it'll make things better for us going forward. Once we can get to like the magic number 50, um, Twitch gives us a little more priority and a little, a few other things. So that's the current drive. Um, this week, what, you want to have 50 followers? No, we want to have 50 recognized followers on Twitch. Oh, I see. Okay. <clears throat> 
Um, okay, this week, <clears throat> I'm going to be linking onto the website, davidspake.com, all of the um, previous streams and videos. This one will be up mon by Monday, um, Monday night as well. Everything will be linked there. <clears throat> so, um, that'll be on davidspake.com. You'll be able to find that. I'll put it on the Facebook page as well. Tuesday night at 6 o'clock is the um, Cinco de Mayo um, salsas and guacamole. And we'll see how this sour cream turned out. I'm going to keep it on the counter overnight tonight. And then tomorrow afternoon, I'll set it in the refrigerator and let it like stabilize and thicken up. Jerry says her middle name is talkative. And also your, your sister, Sean, says it looks delicious. <laughs> it's really great. It really is great. <laughs> yep. So thank yeah, you, everybody, for coming. This is Over the Counter with David. What? Yeah, I did. I did. I did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, no. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> So Gianna just was saying that she said, you know, there's a place for you to stay in Baltimore and you can come cook in her kitchen anytime. So just a reminder. Awesome. I'm very grateful that anybody took the time out of their day to come and listen to us laugh and talk and be stupid and cook some really great food. Even if I say so myself. Really great food and stupid is our, our middle name. <laughs> right? And um, it's about full. We'll see people who can make it on Tuesday night. It'll be a shorter stream. We shoot for about an hour and kind of focus on a few things and just have some fun there too. What are you going to do on Tuesday? We have the salsa thing. Right, we're doing salsa and guacamole for Cinco de Mayo and... And last Tuesday you did knife sharpening. Right, so this will be on the website and it will be on the YouTube page. Um, we did a segment Tuesday, last Tuesday, on how to sharpen and care for your knives. Um, you look behind you at all those beautiful knives that you did. You have these beautiful knives right here. Um, I will also put a link for the people who might want to just buy the kit that I already have so that you don't have to try to find it yourself because you never know, is this the one or is that the one? Anyway, it'll make it easy for people who just want to do that. Well, thank you, so, Dave. This is wonderful. The drinks were great. The food is even better. Yeah, and you have a, are the joy. Fantastic. Have a great You're the night. joy. Thank you. Oh, I totally forgot to put the wine in the white sauce. So if you make this at home, You'll have wanted to put the um, white wine, a dry white wine, in the white sauce. That's why it's so much thicker than I was thinking it should be. So you'll want to do that yourself. Gianna wants to know, will wine. Jeremy be making margaritas on Cinco de Mayo? And so Gianna, just so you know. If we uh, can get tequila. No, no, no. Hold on. I am not a huge fan of margaritas. Mm -hmm. But I do love tequila and I love mezcal. So I'm going to try to find a mezcal or tequila cocktail that we can make on Tuesday. For sure. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can, um, if we have tequila, I'll do a um, handmade, fresh squeezed um, yeah. margarita on the rocks well, so, uh, as an example. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Actually, you know what? I like those. Like when you do like agave and you like, like. Whatever. Uh, we'll find what we can find because with things being the way they are, we may not. You know, some ingredients and some things are available and not. Right. But we'll come and try to make some from scratch. But Gianna, just so you know, we will definitely be making some type of cocktail themed for Cinco de Mayo. TBD on what that will be. Right. And your brother says bye bye and your mother bye. says bye and your sister says bye and we all say goodbye. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. bye.